This podcast is brought to you by ID8 Studios, a four rent commercial soundstage at the Entrepreneur Sandbox here in the heart of Kakaako. Whether making a movie, commercial, music, photography, or a podcast, check out ID8 Studios for your next digital media production. And if you're a nonprofit, be sure to ask about ID8 community discounts. For more info on ID8 or to book the st- studio, visit ID8Studios.org. Aloha, everybody. Welcome to the Hawaiiverse Podcast, a podcast that supports local by watching the Merry Monarch just to see the guys without their shirts and that one halal with all the buff guys. I'm your host, Kamaka Diaz, and they asked me to join that halal every year, but I always have to turn them down due to um, scheduling conflict. Well, you know, how, you know how it goes. I mean, whatever. Okay, before we introduce our guests, I just want you to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash kamakadias if you love this podcast and want to support us. A special mahalo to Robert Orozco for signing up for the Hua Aloha tier. I appreciate you mucho. Okay, let's get into it because I am so stoked for this episode. Our guest today is a digital marketing manager from the island of Oahu. She is a published photographer, videographer, and writer, and has over 14 years in the music industry as an executive assistant to the legendary rock promoter Barry Fay, as well as a production assistant for several national artists such as Prince, Metallica, and Kiss. She currently manages a network of 18 various niche social media channels, websites, and groups, totaling over 5 million followers worldwide and over 500 million views. This does not include her personal YouTube channel with over 100,000 subscribers that is dedicated to animal rescue. She is most known for being the creator of 808 Viral, divers created, <coughs> creating diverse creative viral content and making people laugh. I am so excited to talk with her today. Her name is Danielle Stofi To. Aloha, Danny. Welcome to the podcast thank here you. at ID8 Studios. How are you doing? Good. Thank you. I'm so honored to be here. Yes, it's great to see you. We connected last year for the first time, jumped on a call, just shared about our lives with each other, and then tried to think of ways to collaborate. And, you know, we're on the, we're on the same mission of almost storytelling you do it in a different way you compile a bunch of story videos and you share it with the masses and here we have people come on our podcast and tell their stories and then post it on social media which you're kind of an expert of so I hope that we can get a lot of insight from you pick your brain a little bit and get to know you as well okay I'm warning you you can pick my brain but I'm warning you (laughs) (laughs) well I'm excited we'll see we'll see how this podcast goes but before we get into that I gotta know where you from where you grad and what was it like growing up um so I was growing here on the windward side Kaneohe um I went to St. Francis, but I wanted to graduate early, so I, I, my mom sent me to the school called Varsity International, which doesn't exist anymore. It was in a building across Pucks Alley, and so that I could get extra credits and went to summer school, and so I could graduate a year early because I was ready to go to college. And so, um, what was the other question? That was uh, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Where are you from? You got that. Where are you grad? Got that. What was it like growing up? Oh, God. I I was really lucky. I think I had a lot of... Um, my dad was in the military, but he was stationed here permanently. So the only times that we ever had to leave was once he had to work in Japan for a year and once in Korea. So I pretty much grew up here, and then I got to go to Japan and Korea. Um, it was amazing. I, ro- I rode horses. I There was a time there was a stables up at Camp Smith, and I had my own horses there and up at Barber's Point, and... Um, we used to like ride in the valleys and pick guavas and, <laughs> but I was ready to leave. You know, I think like a lot of people, we feel, um, island fever at some point, you know, you have to like leave to grow. So, um, yeah, I graduated early so I could just heli on out. <laughs> and where'd you go? <laughs> I went to Denver. Hmm, Colorado. I had a choice of That's California good. or Denver. I was going to try to go in the music industry with my great uncle, who's a producer, um, or I could go to Denver and go in the music industry and work for a man named Barry Fay, godfather of rock and roll. And I knew him because he used to work with Uncle Tom Moffat and Ken Rosine and Golden Voices probably before your time. Mm-hmm. Do you know any of these guys? Nope. These were the but guys I'll nod who brought, like I do. Okay, so they they all brought all the concerts here back in the day. And it, if people remember back at that time, um, it wasn't like shows that any of us really wanted to see all the time. And they brought people like Rolling Stones, but when you're young, we're like, we don't care about 
Rolling Stones, mm-hmm. you know? So I was like, I'm going to go and I'm going to go work for this guy, Barry Faye, and I'm going to learn and I'm going to come back and be a promoter and I'm going to bring all the great shows mm-hmm. until I learned like how promoters really were. And I knew I was like, did not have the heart for that. Mm-hmm. Um, you got to have a gambler's heart to be a promoter. Mm. As so. in you said, so what you mean by that? It's, it's a risky business. Very. And you have mm-hmm. to be able to, you have to have a hard shell and mm-hmm. you got to know how to manage complex personalities in the music industry. And I mean, my, my, my former boss, like if somebody didn't go on stage, he held a gun to his head. <laughs> you know I mean? What? Like this was back in the day when things were <laughs> You could get, get away with a lot more. He was called the godfather of rock and roll for a reason. Wow. Um, but you know, you had to be tough and you had to be hard and I was never going to be that. Yeah. So I was, I was a good behind the scenes person. So I, I knew my role pretty quickly. Yeah. And like you said, you're a behind the scenes person. So I'm excited that I get to get you in front of the camera and people can see the <laughs> face behind I 808 know, it's so viral. And, you know, you do a lot of these uh, social media things, but you're behind the keyboard. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's so cool that we can get to know you. Uh, so when you were working for Barry Faye, you did that for about 14 years, right? Mm-hmm. And that was all in Colorado? Yeah, it was based out of Denver, but we worked, I mean, we did shows here in Hawaii. We, mm-hmm. we did Prince here um, when he got married to Maite. Um, we did those three shows. We did shows in Vegas. We did shows in Arizona. We did shows in, um, I guess, Arizona. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then Red Rocks was a big one. We did a lot of the shows at Red Rocks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I went on, you know, I went on the road with a couple of the artists too as well. Like individually, I would go off every now and then. And, but it was mostly like Vegas, Hawaii. So I'd, anytime I could come home and do a show, it was always cool. Okay. And so you were into music growing up in Hawaii? I, yeah, I just loved music and mm-hmm. I, I wanted to, I wanted to be part of the industry. Did you, you know? play music, sing? I played drums. Oh, yeah. Jordan the drummer, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get together. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I started off like, um, actually I was just hanging around with rock bands and then I would just sit down on their kits and learn. And then I eventually went to the marching band mm-hmm. um, and, you know, I was part of a drum line. And so, and you know, I couldn't play any other instrument. I tried, I tried so hard. I wanted, I wanted to play ukulele. I learned like <laughs> one song barely. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I could play the flutophone thing like that, you know, like when you're in elementary school, the little recorders. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that, was, I, I, that was like a good indication that I was always going to be a frustrated musician and mm. I couldn't sing well. So, you know, you become a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That's like the the music equivalent of like when you can't teach, right, teach gym. Right, Become a drummer. Because everybody you, can <laughs> drum. If you're a guitar player, you know how to play drums. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> okay, I got it. So how did you get into this whole digital marketing side? Um, you know, because I, when I was during the time in the 90s when I was working for Barry, like we didn't have IT people. We didn't, you know, you kind of like when you're an executive assistant, you just have to do everything. We had to do the websites. We had to figure it all out. Um, and as time went on, like whoever I was working for, Mm -hmm. it was like, Danny, we got, we, we need to get online. We need to do a social media page. We need a MySpace page. We need (laughs) whatever. Um, yeah, I was queen of MySpace, by the way, (laughs) just in case anybody was wondering. (laughs) Yeah. Shout out. I would love to get MySpace Tom on here. If you have any connection to him. You know what? I know somebody who does though. (laughs) Cause he lives lives on the Island. I know. And I know a couple people know him, so I'm gonna hook you up. I'll tell you exactly. Um, that'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I was so bummed when they, they have MySpace up, but they took away all of our fun things that we used to have on there. Like, yeah, they lead it. Everybody's accounts, right? No, I mean, the accounts are still there, but it's like not the, like the style that we had. It's like this basic, oh, okay. like Wait, HTML version. I can look up my own MySpace account. Yeah. Cause I Mine's swear, on there. I swear I tried to do that. And I couldn't find it. My, mine was on there. I looked, I just looked it up a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, what's oh, still there? What? Yeah. I gotta go look this up. <laughs> I'm going to look up. So you I don't even know if you can still log in into MySpace? it. Yeah, but do you I, remember I, what your username was? I mean, I'm gonna guess it's Kamaka Diaz. Let's see if it pops up. Oh wait, uh, MySpace.com. Yeah. No way. If if no way if this pops up. Oh my goodness. Is it there? I think this is it. It's not. The picture isn't loading, but it's super basic it's, now. It's like it, it I'll takes say there's away. There's no post. It's so. Are you sure? I can't, I can't see anything right over here. Oh, yeah. But Kamaka DSA. Maybe it's that, the browser you're using. Maybe okay. you should try a different browser. All right, I'll, go, I'll go try Because they're not maintaining it anymore. Oh, I'm so. about to go down a deep <laughs> rabbit right? hole if I can find When I it. saw my top five, I'm like, oh, wow, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, and, and the cool thing about this is you could post to people's walls. Yeah. So, like, you could have full-on comment talk story yeah. sessions just on the wall and everybody could see it. I miss MySpace. It was so simple. <laughs> 
That Simple was the times. OG, and then it upgraded to Facebook. Are you even old enough for MySpace? I'm 30. Oh my god, you look so young. <laughs> you have yeah. rest, you know, you have resting happy face. Because I have resting bitch face. I have to literally like make sure I'm here smiling. But you, I've never met anybody. You know how I know because when we went to the tipsy pig for that video that we had to do, and everybody was supposed to have like a straight face. Just and, that like, one, um, and I told you, I said, thing, come on, yeah. go like this. You gotta just relax your face. And you're like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, no, come on, go relax your face. Like you physically relax like, it in a smile. <laughs> like you, I said, no, you stop smiling. <laughs> I'm like physically. I looked at your muscles. Like I think they're stuck that way. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that, but yeah, maybe. <laughs> try, try right oh, now. That's a make us see. You're still smiling. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll try to work on that. I'll try to work on my R R B uh, R. Was it you know, RBF? For a man, RBF. Like, for women, RBF is great because we don't get wrinkles. But for men, your smiling gives you character as you get older, so it's not a bad thing. Well, I'm I'm gonna get more wrinkles, right? Because I'm smiling. But you're a man, so it comes across more like character. Okay, like it's wise, like, wise and rugged kind of. Yeah. He like that guy's been through some <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah, but like good yeah. stuff. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's been through some stuff, but like real happy easy, stuff. But, uh, happy stuff. <laughs> he probably smiled a lot while he was young. <laughs> he probably was a, like a foot model. <laughs> <laughs> he used to sell his feet and make money on Yeah, that. he makes so. Much I Money. wish I w- <laughs> totally wish <laughs> with yeah. his bow toes. My bow toes, yeah. <laughs> I I had this great idea. Um, just, I'm talking to the the audience right now. <laughs> I had this great idea to create an only uh, what's it called feet finders because <laughs> uh, last year I was I I would see a er- lot of videos of like I just made forty thousand dollars selling feet or I was secretly taking pictures of my mom's feet and bought her a car or whatever <laughs> and I was like is it really that easy <laughs> so I got all my friends stoked we were just like yeah we're gonna make so much money we're gonna be rich go on all these like friend vacations <laughs> and then I started one um I made my girlfriend make one, and like I was like telling every, all my friends to do it. Like we should all do it. We can make so much money. It's so easy. I um, recently just deleted the account because I made zero dollars the last Aww. like what I don't know how many months. Uh, just people, I guess. I I feel like it's a lot of guys looking for girls. Oh. Because I didn't get any audience, or maybe I just didn't try hard. I really thought like I just make a profile and everybody will come to me. So I really <laughs> we didn't all think like. That, right? Yeah, th- th- I didn't really try, but I made zero dollars and I paid like fourteen ninety nine for the yearly subscription because oh. you got to pay to make it. It's so actually lost money. Oh no. But I mean, it. I learned. Yeah. And maybe, you know, I'll just stick to what I'm good, good at, story. Like, like podcast. Yeah. And it's a great story for your podcast. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I, so well worth the, the, the only money I made was I made my girlfriend made, make an account and I talked to a guy from her <laughs> account. <laughs> and that's what it was. And then I made I made money from that. Oh, my God. Yeah. But because I realized that people just want to talk. Yeah. It's not so much you're just like, I thought it was like, here, snap a picture of my feet here. Go. Do whatever, do whatever you, you do. want. Just don't let me know what's going on. But I guess they want to like kind of start a, like not start a relationship, but have this kind of r- rapport mm-hmm. before they you know start buying your feed. So, yeah. Well, that's kind of like the thousand true fans concept. You know, like you, how you can you don't need a lot of followers to make money because you connect with your followers. So if mm-hmm. you have a thousand followers and you connect with all of them and they spend $100 a month, you make $100,000 a year. Yes, I guess that's um, what I'm doing with Patreon. <laughs> so I have a Patreon. You guys can go check it out. <laughs> and uh, there are no feet pics over there. I was just going to ask yeah. you that. Are your feet pictures there? No, no, no. Well, now no, you no. have to yeah. post them, though. <laughs> I guess, hey, if you, hey, if anybody's listening to this and wants some 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 feet pics, He's I'm, already produced I'm not opposed batch created. to it. I'm not opposed to it. So just DM us. <laughs> and any uh, sponsorships that want to sponsor this podcast, <laughs> Feet Finder, if you'd like to sponsor this podcast, just hit us up. We're totally open to it. We'll make a feet-only uh, podcast edition. So when people go to YouTube or Spotify, they're just only watching our feet the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just talking regularly on the podcast. Oh Great idea. You have to have animated feet going yeah. like, it's this big. We'll, we'll, have, Point. Uh, we'll, we'll <laughs> do like your idea when we have a bow on the toe. Yeah. You should find a sponsor that makes bows. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can have bow toes. That would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you were in that kind of music scene a little bit. Um, did you get into comedy as well while we were doing that? Or yeah. Is that I mean, like we, well, we pr- we promoted comedy shows. Okay. All the time. Um, yeah. There was there was plenty of comedy like venues there, but we also had you know national comedians that would come in and 
Um, Pauly Shore was like the first one that I got to meet. I remember that uh-huh. because he called and I thought it was a joke. Because he was talking just like Pauly Shore would talk. <laughs> and he was asking for my, my boss. And I'm like, yeah, right. And I hung up on him. <laughs> and then he called, he called my boss's cell phone. He's like, you know, Pauly was trying to reach me, right? I'm like, oh, that was really him? He sounded like straight out of the movie. That was like <laughs> Biodome on the phone. Like, <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> That's so funny. So you, you, when did you end up coming back to Hawaii and starting the 808 Vile, starting like these comedy sketches? Yeah, so um, around 2000, right after we got married in 2007, um, my my grandfather got really sick. My grandmother mm-hmm. and my grandfather were sick, and my parents were struggling. So we decided to move back to help take care of the family. So we came back in 2008. And who's we? Me and my husband. <laughs> Me and my husband. Your husband for <laughs> how many years? And now We've been together 18 years wow. now. Wow, 18 yeah. years. Congrats. Yeah. He's 13 years Younger than me. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. <laughs> and I met him on a video game. <laughs> nice. Yes. What was the story behind that? Um, so, yeah, that was an interesting story. I, um, like, I was on a video game because I, you know, I had, uh, I was one of these, one of the people that, um, you know, was, became dependent on opioids mm. because I was prescribed by my doctor for a misdiagnosed and I, this was the first attempt that I had made to come off the medication. And so I was trying to keep myself busy and I got on a video game and I met him in Star Wars Galaxies because um, I went into this game and it was a, it was a multiplayer game, a role playing game. Mm-hmm. And so I was in the middle of nowhere and I had just gotten like robbed by a bunch of Imperials and I didn't even have all the, my like armor or anything. And I was standing in the middle of nowhere and he came by on a Land Cruiser and saw me. He's like, hey, do you need a ride back to town? I'm like, yes, please. Would you like some clothes? Yes, please. So he came. Be- he became like my video game sugar daddy. Um, and he did like beta testing for the for LucasArts. So like he he was like finding pa- you know things that needed to be patched. So he was already mm-hmm. on like all the time. And so anytime I would log in, he would come find me, and we would go on like Star Wars dates. What? And so <laughs> so you just had this character that you had in the game, and. I guess you guys started, like, dating virtually. Yeah, I have our and, character images and everything from that day. Wow, but you don't—you you never knew how each other looked like? No. It was, like, it was almost like online dating, but, like, without even knowing, like, blind, even knowing. Uh, blind dating. Totally, and, beca- and the thing was, I thought he was older. That's why I ended up with someone younger, because uh. I always dated older guys. I'd never dated anyone, even my own age. Yeah. And he was only 19 at the time. Wow. So, like— when I finally, I can't remember, because he was talking about really mature, he's very mature, he's yeah. a lot smarter than I'm, very intelligent, and um, he was talking about things like Monty Python, and I'm like, no 19-year-old's going to talk yeah. about Monty, so I'm thinking he's like, okay, he's got to be in his t- like 20s, maybe 30s, and then when he's like, yeah, it's my birthday, and I'm like, how, how old are you, 19, because he just turned 19, I'm like, oh, friend zone, <laughs> I'm like, he is a baby, <laughs> you know? but we just, we hung out so much, we were so close, and then we decided to meet. And, um, what was that like? That was like, so I, I had moved back to Denver and I picked him up. And he was, his first, he was from a, literally a farm in South Dakota in the middle of nowhere, like mm-hmm. just straight out of a corn farm, like, like, uh, like children of the corn kind of thing, <laughs> you know, like just, and he'd never been on a plane even. Wow. So when he showed, like at this point I knew what he looked like because he, he was working with this ghost hunter show back that was out at the time. And so I'd kind of seen him. Okay. But like, yeah, it was awkward at first. I remember with the baggage claim, we were just kind of standing there like, hey, hey. And he brought me flowers and he Aww. brought lilies and he'd gotten the lily orange stuff like all over him. And I didn't want to say anything because so, it was like everywhere, uh. like on his face and his hands. Um, I ended up telling this story later. He's like, oh, my God, that's so humiliating. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it was great because we, we hung out like he stayed at this hotel and we went out like, I mean, we I took him all over Denver and all over Colorado. And it was we had a connection right away. Like there was yeah. no doubt. And I was so glad that we didn't know what each other looked like. Because you would have you drop all those like preconceived notions of who you're supposed to be with. Mm-hmm. It's really a- amazing like how much we determine who we're supposed to be with just like in our minds. Mm-hmm. He is the com- polar opposite of anything I would have ever imagined. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and so we ended up married. Um, we, we, we waited till he was 21 because <laughs> he <laughs> wanted to drink at the wedding. But um, yeah, and then we got married. And he looks so young. And it was oh god, he still looks so young. It's so unfair. <laughs> <laughs> it's so unfair. You look old, though. No, but I mean, I look younger for my age. But it's, yeah. it, but if he if he just looked like his normal age, we would look more. Mm-hmm. But I remember we we went to Jamaica on our honeymoon, 
And <laughs> we got to the hotel. And they were bringing us drinks, and they're like, gave him one. They're like, you, does your mom want one? <laughs> and then I told Brian later, I'm like, oh my God, he thinks I'm your mom? He's like, no, he said, do you want to drink, mon? Oh. <laughs> I was like, he did not say that. He did not. But I love you for doing that and making me feel better. But he thought it was your mom because that's how young you look. <laughs> Yeah. Doing a drink, man. That's so funny. What a what a cool story. That's a, uh, like a twist on like somebody meeting on eHarmony. Yeah. Dot com just through a video game. I'm sure that happens a lot these days because the video game world is so like, it expanded so, so mainstream. big. Yeah. And then there's there's Twitch. There's um, Fortnite. You know, there's people just watch people play Fortnite. Um, all these other stuff. So I'm sure. That, there's more of these stories out there. You know, there's a group on Facebook for Star Wars Galaxies, and we we ended up finding people we went we met from that time because we got married in the game too. I don't know if I told you guys, that, but what? we got married in the game first. Who and officiated the wedding? Like there was, um, I don't remember. It was one of the one of the players. I don't remember oh, okay. at the time, but. Um, it wasn't like Luke Skywalker. Or no, something. <laughs> no. But it, I mean, it was a rebel because we were in the re- we were rebels. But oh, like. Okay. Um, but yeah, and then they, they remembered us. And then we, we realized that a bunch of other people got married too. So on the group, we were surprised how many people met in this particular game. Uh-huh. I don't know what it was about this game, but like there were so many matches. But I'm really glad that we're not single. Now, my husband and I talked about it. We have no idea about the new apps. My friends <laughs> tell me, and I'm like, what is that called? <laughs> what do you do? And she's showing me. I'm like, oh my God, this is scary. <laughs> if I had to date now, I'd be in trouble. Yeah, yeah. It's scary. Well, I'm happy you found love uh, through Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm happy it wasn't uh, your brother or sister. Oh, God. Like some right. other Star like, Wars peeps. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Luke, Leia. <laughs> right. Come on. Thank God. <laughs> See, if they had apps back then, they they would have known. They would have known. Actually, no, because you don't have uh, you don't have your last name on that. Or actually, they they, they they wouldn't know that they were siblings, anyways. Oh yeah. Huh. How, how that almost went really wrong, right? <laughs> that whole thing almost went really wrong. Yeah, yeah. So no, I'm just, we look so opposite, though. Like, so I, there was no way, like, <laughs> I mean, there was no way that we were connected in any way. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you guys moved back to Hawaii. You quit your job doing that? Yeah, no? I left. Um, well, after I stopped working for Barry, because he had retired at that point, um, I went and I... Um, Actually, was working in law, like I was a legal, like a paral- working as a paralegal for a while. But I, yeah, I quit and came back. I decided to start, and we we were really unfortunately. My my grandfather had passed away um, very quickly after that, mm-hmm. and he left me some money, which allowed us to start our own businesses. Mm-hmm. And Business that was how, says, huh? Businesses. Yeah, plural. my husband, because my husband was a plural. massage therapist at the time, oh, okay. so like we got him started on his massage therapy, and I started a business doing websites, mm-hmm. and um, and then around two thousand. Was it 12 or 13 when Vine, I got on Vine. And that's kind of where everything started. Were you on, were you on Vine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I had one viral Vine. Did you? It, was, it wasn't even a me. It was a video of this Barney clip where this kid is like, brushing my teeth in the back. <laughs> Want to get oh rid God, of all Barney. the plaque. And like, I don't know if you know that clip, yeah. but it's like this kid and he's like, oh. like doing like this when he's brushing his teeth. Oh. So it was like, it looked inappropriate, but like, I just, I thought that was so funny. I think I saw it on Tumblr. I was into Tumblr back oh, yeah, then. Tumblr, that was yeah. when I was in uh, college and like during my breaks between classes, I would go chill in the computer lab and just go on Tumblr. Tumblr. So oh, that was the only clip. Yeah. I think he's like just brushing his teeth and that one part he goes like, <laughs> like this. So, so I get that. Cringe and- yeah. Yeah. So that was the um, one viral clip I had on, oh on Vine. God. Were you like, were you part of the Hawaii Vine community? No, I, I wasn't. Yeah. Or? I wasn't like a creator influence mm. I, I used to post on youtube mm. but i was more i guess low-key i i don't really promote it that much or i didn't i didn't want to be like an influencer yeah. you know quote unquote they weren't even called influencers then. yeah they weren't even they were just <laughs> what were we calling creators them I don't even know. or yeah they were well, viners really, or viners or yeah, there, there wasn't really a label beside right. uh, um such as influencer and that was when everything yeah. was so like organic this is when the community was small the rules weren't a lot. You could kind of do whatever yeah. you wanted. It was so... And I tell people now, like, Vine, they're like, wow, six seconds? I'm like, yeah, we had to, like, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Like, <laughs> yeah. six seconds. But, um, yeah, I jumped on there. And, I w- again, like, this was all part of my journey of coming off medication. Because it took... This was a, a long journey for me. Like, once, you know, um, I started to, like, when I realized, you know, the whole opioid thing. When we mm-hmm. finally all realized 
that we were put on medication and told it was safe and it wasn't, you know, mm -hmm. and it was this journey of coming off. And one of the main things when you come off medication is, you know, if you, if you come off right away, it's very hard. Tapering is where it's at. And the way you do that is slowly and you have to keep yourself busy. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of where 808 Viral came in because there was points where, you know, for me, I had to step down um, from very large high doses of fentanyl down to like, because I've, I've overcome fentanyl. I know exactly what, what that's like. And coming down and keeping myself busy on social media. And that's when I got into Hawaii Vines. I just started making vines and connecting to other people. And I had ideas. Like, that was the thing. I, had, yeah. I would see somebody and go, I have an idea for you. Mm -hmm. And I would give them the idea and I would tell them how to do it and they would do it. And that's kind of how it started for me because I would write all of these, like, skits and, um, and they would trust me. <laughs> they would mm -hmm. trust me to, let like, shoot things. And when Vine went away and there was kind of a quiet period and I was like, you know, um, I, I, I created 808 Viral mm -hmm. and I decided, you know, we need a place where there's all the Hawaii content in one place. Mm -hmm. That was my initial intention was like, where do we put everything in one place so people can find it? Mm -hmm. And I started it with my, um, I did this like really badly photoshopped um, like spam Oreos mm -hmm. and I made a meme with spam Oreos, like a package. It even said like our watermark on it. It was really not even that good. But it went viral, and it went so viral that it was like it was on Jimmy Kimmel's monologue. Like what? Nabisco had to do a statement and say that it doesn't exist. Um, Spam did a statement. Like it's on Snopes. If you look it up, you'll see they mm -hmm. actually had to debunk it because people thought it was real, and they were kind of mad. Like some of them were mad. Like this is getting crazy. These Oreo flavors are ridiculous. <laughs> I never in a million years thought people were going to think that was real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but that that meme got the 808 Viral Facebook page immediately, like 20,000 followers just wow. from, from that. And then... Um, and this is 2015? This was around 2015, yeah. Okay, which is a lot of followers. A Because, like, having a K next to your name or before, I don't know, maybe, like, 2017, 20. 2017, 2018, I think, I feel like that's when the, whenever Bretman Rock came along. like Bretman was the, on Hawaii, Vine. He used to be on I, Vine? Bretman had 3,000 followers when he followed Hawaii Vines. Yeah. And I remember sharing his clip, the first clip we ever, he would he would tag us for Revines mm -hmm. back like when he didn't have any followers. Wow. And he would do this leg twirl thing. You ever see him do that leg no. twirl thing? And that was the first one. And then the second one was his I'm So Fancy, mm -hmm. which went, that's when he ended up like, hitting it big mm. and then suddenly I look at his page I'm like what the oh my god he just blew up you yeah know? yeah and then that was the last time we ever talked to Bretman like he was on a <laughs> rocket ship yep. you know he's, a, he's in another planet right now he's amazing it's super amazing because like he's one of the few influencers that doesn't pr like subscribe to any drama mm -hmm. especially when he was in the beauty industry yeah like if you actually wa watch when how he's he's always focused on himself he just takes care of himself he takes care of his family mm -hmm. and his friends and he doesn't get into any of that. He I never that. had to hurt people or get any, any drama mm -hmm. to like to build a, an audience. Yeah, didn't have to do any clickbait stuff mm -hmm. or. And his confidence, yeah. like I need some of that. <laughs> right? I think we all do. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, that's. Super but I remember cool. him. He was just a kid, you know. Yeah. And it's, just to it, see him grow. It's so amazing, and I know there's a lot of people from Vine who switched over to Instagram mm -hmm. who have a still a, a very big following mm -hmm. and really capitalized on that momentum like uh how's this guy was, uh, oh yeah was, he he was yeah him and shaka maka those yeah. guys like i think they grew up together yeah. and they were all on vine but i guess the ogs was like passion the mm -hmm. whole uh, like uh hawaii crew was passion russell was it russell satelle um uh, bronson bronson yep. yes bronson varde yep yeah so those those were like the what were they called wasn't didn't wasn't there like a, a crew name? Well, we had they became eight oh eight viral when I first started eight oh eight viral. Oh, okay. And I got the first followers. I went to them to make some videos, and the first video we made was um, Moke's Try Vegan Food. Okay. So we had the Moke's and Tittas. Oh, that's so yeah. On eight oh eight viral. It was viral. also Moke and Tittas, yeah. the very local yeah. based. Things. And we did the first video that we did that went viral was um, Moke's Try Vegan Food, which which was a. Basically, a remake of um, the Cholos. Did, oh, they, did, okay. they did a, like the Mexican version, right? Mm -hmm. And so I was like, we should do that. And that video just took off. Yeah. And so then we're like, we should just keep doing this, you know? And so I would just, that was a really, I was really blessed because I was this, you know, random person that was like, hey, I got these ideas. And I would set up these shoots. I didn't even know what I was doing, really. I mean, I'm, I have experience, but it was like, this was all new. Mm -hmm. And so, and they were, I was really blessed. They, they, trusted me <laughs> yeah and they came and they showed up and they made the videos and it was just like such an awesome like 
experience. And we, in the beginning, we just, all we did was just do it for fun. There wasn't anything like we need to like, you know, get sponsors or any of that. There was none of that in the beginning. It was all just like suit, just fun. Just good I feel times. Like that was like the early creator days with even YouTube where you just hit up a friend, you do something for fun. And now it's like, okay, what does it pay? How is this beneficial to my career? Mm -hmm. It's a lot of people don't really do things for free anymore. No. And it's hard to just collab with people. Yeah. It's like there's all this pressure and everybody's competing and, and you're all, you're competing with a lot of people who are doing things. It's not even real. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people are cheating the system and it's just different. I, I, I don't know. We still try like, it, it, it definitely, sh it shifted. There was a big shift and it's a lot mm -hmm. of reasons why people kind of split up because it was like everybody had their different, you know, like what they wanted to do with it. And it was really, it also became difficult too, because we wanted to keep doing it, but there was, we all had to work, you know, we're all working three jobs. We're all, and you know how much time goes into making content, mm -hmm. you know? And, um, so I tried to drum up some, you know, and it, we did, we had plenty of offers and it was just an issue of like, I don't like when we got started, we didn't know what we were doing. Like, I didn't know what I was doing with this. This was all new. Mm -hmm. Like we were, we were recreating, like we were literally building this as we're going, you mm -hmm. know? And, um, this is where I always say like, when now I've got people helping with this because I'm not a business person when it comes to that. I'm a creative person. Mm -hmm. I could do the creative stuff backwards, forwards all day mm -hmm. long. Um, but when it came to like having to go to meetings and meeting, you know, businesses and brands and negotiating deals and trying to keep everybody happy, because that was the other thing, you know, like there was no set prices for anything, you know, so you'd get money and you'd be like, I don't want to just, they only want this person, but I don't want to hurt all these guys feelings. So I'm just going to like, invite them all and spread mm -hmm. the money out. You know, it was just like, I, you know, I, I learned a lot during that time, mm -hmm. like trying to keep everybody happy and trying to like, so we could make some money. Cause we, we, we were like, we could do this full time. You guys could all quit your jobs and we could just do this. And I think once the money came into play, it all changed. Yeah. And that was after Vine or during Vine? That was, that was the beginning of 808 Viral. Yeah. Oh, okay. So right after Vine. Yeah. After Vine. Because in the beginning, we were, everything was cool, but it just, you know, everybody had, they have different reasons they were getting into it, you know? Okay. And, um, and then, you know, there was just this like pressure. It just felt like this, there was weird pressure all the time. And it still feels like that. Yeah. You know? Speaking about pressure... Do you ever feel the pressure to always have an opinion or post about certain issues that go on because you have a yeah. platform with a lot of followers? Yeah, I mean, people straight up get mad if we don't take positions um, on stuff. And like, then they'll get mad if you take the wrong position. Right, right. And, and, and the thing is, like, I'm pretty careful. Like, I, I, there's, I have a, some kind of rules that I try to stick by, which is I don't take a position on Hawaiian issues, mm -hmm. especially when it's... Hawaiians facing Hawaiians because mm -hmm. it's not my position to do that. I amplify Hawaiian voices. I assist. You know, we never speak for you, and I don't want to ever like influence anyone on that side. Um, so I try to stay away from all of that. So there's been times where there recently been things that are being shared, like how come you guys aren't posting this? And I'm just like, you know, other people are posting it, and like we're just not going to post that. And mm -hmm. if it's also if it's really divisive um, or too political. Like, I'm really careful because we can, like, you know, we have the power to sway people's opinions. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, like, I'm not, like, I, I don't post, I try not to post emotionally because anytime I do that, it goes wrong. So I'm trying, I try to look at it and go, okay, wait, like, how can we more, have co like, the most balanced perspective? Because I want the pe people to know that we're trying to stay as neutral as possible because, mm -hmm. you know, it, things aren't black and white. It's, yeah. it's like, there's so many gradients in between and... A lot of times you see these fights happening, they're right on both sides, you know? And um, so I don't know. I'm just super careful. The other thing is I don't ever want to, like, I don't rush to put things out. I wait till I have backs. Mm -hmm. And what I try to do is wait till everybody else puts it out, and then I correct things. Mm -hmm. That's been my big thing. Like, okay, they put some stuff out. This is wrong. So we're going to put out something. Not to make anybody look mm -hmm. bad, but just so that people know what really happened, mm -hmm. you know, and what the true facts are. Because it's so damaging and Definitely. divisive right now, right? Yeah, and we, I mean, that that came up a lot more during the last couple of years where, uh, you know, we got the whole pandemic going on. You got a lot of issues. We had the elections. Mm -hmm. So, so many co uh, controversial topics, you know, appeared during these last couple of years. And, um, you know, even going back to, like, the Black Lives Matter movement and then gun shootings and, you know, police brutality, all of that. Um, which, you know, doesn't necessarily affect Hawaii directly, but they still want everybody 
to have an opinion and choose a side. You know, like there's that one saying, if you if you don't, I'm going to butcher this, but like mm-hmm. if you don't have an opinion, if you're on the fence, you're choosing the, the side of the oppressor. It's yeah. a Martin Luther King quote, um, something like that. Right. So it's hard navigating that world of social media. And it's especially with like us now because we've grown and we're going to keep growing. People tag us and stuff all the time. Like we're a, like a media network, like yeah. an 80 viral or whatever. And I'm happy to share anything. I, I, I really want to make a platform where you can sh- say anything. You can swear. You could not swear. You could be blue. You could be red. Yeah. You could, <laughs> it's really, it's really your platform to express whatever you want to d- express. And I might agree with it. I might not. I might not blatantly say I disagree with you, but the thing is, is just talking and having perspective. Um, so whatever your opinion on something is, I, I'd like to hear why you think that. Oh. But unfortunately, you can't just post them. I mean, you have community guidelines to wrestle with. You have mm-hmm. the algorithm to wrestle with. You have the ego rhythm to, to ego wrestle rhythm. with. <laughs> yeah, people's egos, you know. That's funny. Like you have to deal with the egos of people, and then you start getting attacked. So there's a lot, like there's a real dark side of social media as well, like that, you know, um, I would love to be able to post anything too, but like a, a lot of it is just because, especially when you, as you get bigger, they'll just report your posts, hmm. and you know that really hinders anything. Like if you're going to monetize, or you can page can get taken. I mean, w- lots of big platforms have lost their pages, had to start over again. Wow! Like so, yeah. that's one of the reasons I'm super careful too, because I just you know we have no violations right now, which is crazy because people would just mass report, port, like report everything on our page all the time, and then hmm. we get hit with like automated, you know, reports and it would take like years from them to clear them, you know? And, um, so now I'm just super careful. And I just, you know, like, again, like if, you know, there's consequences to everything you post. And I, I always tell people like, it's fun to to say all those things, but knowing that things are going to come back to you in a way that you wouldn't expect. Yeah. The algorithm is another beast. The algorithm used to be predictable. Now it's not predictable anymore. It's weird because like you could see a page with like, 50,000 followers and they got like 10 likes on a post like it's so it's so well, some weird of, some of that's because it's some fake, is fake yeah. yeah but um some somewhere they have organic growth or you post something and it's at the wrong time or i don't know what it is it just yeah it won't get traction anymore i swear yeah. it wasn't like that before no it's not it's really hard well there's mm. so many people on now too there's yeah. a lot more people and People always ask me, like, when's the best time to post? You know, it's not the same for everybody. I can't mm-hmm. even give you that answer. I can tell you for me, I like Wednesdays. What time? Does it, it doesn't matter. We're, mm-hmm. like, throwing darts right now. Like, just keep posting, mm-hmm. you know. Like, that's all you can keep doing. If you didn't like it, like it archive it, try again. Mm-hmm. Try again, you know. Like, people only see, like, the, the successes sometimes. So they, they think everybody's just succeeding mm-hmm. and not realizing that they've tried and tried and tried. You're only seeing what they did well and... I mean, for instance, like when I got started at one point, when I started 808 Viral, I also did something similar to what you did. I failed at what you tried. Mm. You know, we had a coupons site um, at one point. And I also, we also did something called Hawaii Online Marketplace where we were getting local brands and we were going Facebook Live and selling them. And it did really, really well. But I knew the work wasn't like the fulfillment and all of that. Like it was just two of us. We, had, we weren't prepared. Mm-hmm. And we ended up having to stop it because it was too much. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, people, like, forget that we tried things and didn't make them work. And then the next person makes it work. Mm-hmm. You know, like, you were able to make this work. So yeah, people have to give themselves a break when it comes to that, too, you know. Great advice. Yeah. yeah <laughs> definitely. I mean, we were lucky to hit on the first time of the podcast. Uh, our growth was pretty quick. And um, I, I guess I, I don't like to say we got lucky because there's a lot of work that we put into it. But... I think the luck side of it was we came at the right time. Yeah. So the thing that was lucky about everything was the timing because there wasn't really no one doing what we did. Yeah. You filled a niche. Yeah. And we, it was first to market. Mm -hmm. We were talking about stuff that people wanted to know about. I mean, it's honestly just questions that I'm genuinely curious about. So that's all the questions I ask is like, they're not scripted or, I mean, I have questions that I write down, but they're not like from a sponsor or mm-hmm. whatever. It's literally a local boy who grew up in Hilo, Hawaii, questioning his identity as a Kanaka, wondering what it's like to be an Asian American, wondering what it's like to, you know, vote 
red or blue right. or you know whatever it's it is. It's organic. Yes. So that that's what it is. And a lot of people, I guess, have the same questions yeah. and they want to know the answer and they want influential people or people that look like them to answer those questions. Yeah. So that I guess that's what attributes Because you did it for something success. natural. I always tell people like when you overthink what you're doing and you're trying to fill like you're seeing what other people are doing, you're trying to emulate that, mm-hmm. you're going to you're gonna fail. and Or at the very least, if you succeed, you're going to work mm-hmm. really hard because you're going to be doing something that's not natural to you. Mm-hmm. So when you're doing something, like you're truly passionate about something, people, they, they pick up on it. Mm-hmm. And that's how you succeeded with that. And now you, it's not, it's still hard work, but at least you're doing something you care about. You're not having to like fake anything or yeah. push yourself to do something you're not comfortable with. Yeah. And then people always ask me to be on the podcast or suggest other people. But at the end of the day, I would be like, I just, I just want to talk to people I want to talk to. Yeah. You know, this is my podcast. I yeah. shouldn't be swayed by people because I would feel bad. Um, it's hard. I got, I get 50 guests a year. That's all 50 mm-hmm. guests. And I have a list of about over a hundred people that I want to talk to. So when people are like suggesting people, I'm like, that sounds super interesting but I really want to talk to this person because they're on my personal list. You got to prioritize. Yeah, it's like, you got to bring this guy in. Yeah, yeah. We'll have a The Boys episode <laughs> every every now and then. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to hear that you like that. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Maybe we'll do like a little um, short Patreon podcast with Jordan and I. Yeah. We'll, that could be pretty cool. But he could split it up a little bit, you know, like he does maybe a different version, like, and you do one version. Yeah, yeah. A lot of... Crank them out. A lot of ideas that we have, especially with the name change coming up. Yeah. We want to definitely expand a little bit more. Um, So just stay tuned for that. I don't want to reveal too much. (laughs) We're back from a shishi break. (laughs) Thanks to our sponsor, Shaka Tea, always providing the best shishi for us. Really good. (laughs) But it does make you have to pee if you drink it. Yeah. Because you drink a lot of it. I drink a lot of it. I drink a lot of water. But you were saying that as I was going out to take my shishi break, that it could be like a high blood. What was it? Yeah, but you should check your blood sugar if you're peeing a lot because that's not good. Like, do you eat a lot of sugar? I do. Um, I have a sweet tooth. Oh, yeah. So now that, I, when you said that, it kind of got me worried. I wish worried. I had my machine. I would test you. But it's not hard to te- get tested. Huh. Just you got to start testing. So if you if you pee a lot, what if what if you're peeing, but you're like drinking a lot of liquids? You obviously have to you pee You would also out. have to pee a lot. Yeah. Too. So, so how do you differentiate that? Cut back your liquids and see if you're still peeing a lot. I swear I only pee when I have a lot of liquids. Is a lot it of sugar? Liquids. Are there sugar in it? No, I only drink water. Okay. It could just be that you're drinking a lot of water. Yeah. It, it can't hurt to test. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm curious. Because it's really not hard. You know, I'm getting old. That's why. So <laughs> I feel like I have to take care of my body. You really do. Know. And especially if you have a sweet tooth, you got to curb that now because I, I do too. And I mm-hmm. regret it because now I'm I'm like, I, I've cut my sugar back and I reversed it. But I was, mm-hmm. you know, pre-diabetes. Mm. So um, hmm. just because I, and I, and it's so hard when she loves sugar. Oh. Yeah. The other day I got a malasada and I like bit one bite and then I gave it to my husband, like finish it. <laughs> Cause I'm gonna eat. It was warm still, like right. Oh, I done. don't know. How do you stop that though? I it love was very hard. Ice cream. I love yeah. malasadas. I just had a um, Kamehameha Bakery Poi Donut. One of our, our guests before this brought one. So. Oh, God, I know. Mm. I even brought you. A, uh, well, I left it at home, but I brought you some of bananas and oranges because I can't even eat the oranges. Because of the sugar. The sugar. Part. So even like bananas. Like, and or- like it's all got sugar. Apples. I don't eat apple. I don't really like apples. Okay, but they have high high sugar. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like even f- natural fruit that will spike yeah. your blood sugar. You know, like wow. it sucks. Dang. Okay. It really sucks. But there's a lot of things you can eat. Like you know, you just have to shift your. I w- I'm saying do it now. Like that's a good life hack for yeah. you. Like do it because it gets harder as you go on. I mean, you're you're already what thirty. Mm-hmm. It's just gonna get harder because you're gonna hate the fact that you already developed a habit of and all the yeah. things that you love, and then you can't. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it would be good for my cavities, too. <laughs> yeah, and that's the other thing, right? <laughs> okay, well, something to think about. And <laughs> everybody listening to this, if you, you have a sweet tooth, maybe start cutting back a little bit. But I see the only thing I, I'm aware of it, I try to stay away from added sugars. Natural yes. sugars, so that's why I love fruits. Yeah. But And like things that I eat, I, I always check the sugar content. Like, like sucralose and that stuff is so bad for you. Mm-hmm. Your body just doesn't know what to do with it. Yeah, usually if you, can't, uh, if you don't understand or can't read what it's saying, it's probably right. bad for you. But right. So like yogurt, I like yogurt. I like eating the Oikos yogurt because it has zero added sugar. Oh. So, but then I eat like a tub of ice cream, so <laughs> <laughs> it's like it balances out, I guess. Does it? I don't, <laughs> I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay, so yeah, I'll look at it. You guys don't have to be here for my um, my AA meeting or whatever, or sugar SA, SA meeting. My SA meeting. Well, if I figure that out on my own. But okay, let's get into Instagram questions. Let's get okay. into the be aloha you wish to see in the world. Instagram questions presented by Shaka T. First question comes from Eileen Kitty. She wants to know, Danny was hot AF in high school. Tell him about varsity. Is this your classmate? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> What's the name of the username? Uh, Island Kitty. Oh, I got to go look who um, that is. Let me see if I can the find her name. The fact that she knows varsity, then. Like. I know, because you meant, I saw that question when I posted this, and then you mentioned varsity. Yeah. I was like, I thought it meant like varsity sports or something. No, varsity international school. I was, oh, the, okay. I was the voice. I was actually on the commercials. Really? So anybody who was doing radio back then, look. you would have heard me like, you know, I'm from varsity international school. Well, you're not just, oh, you're not just another face. You're a name. <laughs> I don't wow. even know where I came up with that. Island Kitty. Let's see what is their name. Um, I was a bikini model. So she, what she's talking about is, you know, I modeled for like Jimmy Z. Like she, there's, I've got some of it on my Instagram. You can see me. Like I used to do calendars. Wow. Um, I used to be in, I wish I could, wish I knew where some of these were. I don't have them <laughs> anymore, but they were like calendars and ABC stores, you know, the girls. And I was one of those girls and... I was too short to do like real modeling. So I had to do like some print work and, you know, um, Contempo casual, like Contempo. We used to do the center stage stuff at Contempo. And um, oh gosh, what was the other places that we used to do? Jimmy Z, uh, Town and Country. We just, yeah, bathing suit wow. stuff. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> I will, Someone I, who knows me back then. <laughs> this is, this she is, was skinny. This is the, I don't know if you can recognize that profile. Here, you can go look at it. But I was, I, I'm actually in a, one of those calendars from the ABC oh, stores. Wait. Oh, you, you got it? You got it? You oh, came wait, to your mind? Oh, concierge. Kahi'i Lani or whatever it says on top there. I think this is, um, <laughs> it's, that's not her name, though. I don't want to, okay. like, reveal her real name. I know who that is. Kahi'i Lani. Because <laughs> she does casting. Okay. Okay, I know who, you're, I know who it is. Girl. <laughs> We used to get in some trouble back in Varsity. <laughs> She's one of the troublemakers from Varsity that we used to get. We, like, we went to a Motley Crue concert. <laughs> at, at, ugh, we won't go into all that. But that was back in the day. <laughs> we used to sneak into nightclubs on Lure Street, back when Lure Street was, like, cool. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, but um, going back to the calendar, I was going to say, I don't I don't really talk about it, but I, I did a, one of my Race to 50K jobs when I was paying yeah. off my sibling was to model. For a men of Hawaii calendar. Oh, you did a men so, you were in that? Yeah, so I'm August, the month of August in those calendars no at the ABC <laughs> store. My mom bought a bunch and gave it out to some people. I never looked to the photographers. I wonder if it's still the same photographer I work with. That's funny. It was um, this guy. Colin. No. no. It, the Instagram was like Aquarius something. It's Filipino guy. Yeah. yeah I don't, probably a different guy. Interesting. Yeah, I know. Super funny. <laughs> All right. Well, so what about varsity? Any anything else to say about that? That's what <laughs> varsity national school was like a place where like ESL students went who couldn't really had a hard time in the mm -hmm. schools. Kids that were super, super smart or super, super bad. Mm. And the classrooms were small, so you got a lot of attention. So but I met some of like the, we were so bad. Like so I mean, it was I, w I went to the school to get like away from trouble. Because St. Francis girls we're crazy. Like we were crazy. Mm -hmm. So we got a lot of trouble, but then it was even worse at varsity. Wow. <laughs> it was so much worse. <laughs> Sorry, mom. <laughs> I know you. The past then, is the past. Then again, again, I was able to graduate early because, you know, we had religion classes that you didn't have to take at regular school. Mm -hmm. And so I had all these credit, extra credit, you know. Um, and the other thing that was interesting was back, um, you know, they didn't have like, it's, we were talking about Hawaiiana classes, like back then, how it wasn't that long ago how much we were all lied to about the history and i remember like a, a teacher fighting to teach us hawaiiana as part of the history classes mm -hmm. and they so they said okay fine here's the book you're going to teach from and she would go through this book and like cross out big sections like well that's not true and mm -hmm. this didn't happen and she would get in trouble from the you know the um you know the principal and from the parents but when i look at back at it now i'm like she was actually correcting the history. And mm -hmm. I wish I had this book because it was like what we were taught back then about what and what, what we know now is so different. It Definitely. was like so it was like crazy bad information <laughs> and very like written from 
uh, not a Hawaiian <laughs> perspective at all. Seems to be the case, um, huh? Because we're all, all of us, see, we were just talking about some of my friends from Barcy and even St. Francis were like, man, and I'm even finding out some of them speak Hawaiian. Like, I was like, I didn't know you even spoke Hawaiian. She's like, girl, like, we were embarrassed. Mm. We wanted to see it back then. Or they're l- just learning now, you know? Wow. You're the first person I met who told me that your language, first language was Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. I have never, and I've lived here most of my life. Mm-hmm. The fact that I live in a place where there is a host culture and I never met someone with their first language is Hawaiian. How crazy is that? Yeah, well, I, I was lucky to go through the whole Hawaiian immersion schooling system. And my dad just was one of those, the few families that only, that chose to only speak to his kids in Hawaiian. So it's pretty rare. It's getting more common these days. So it's pretty cool to be part of that. Movement. So outside of your family, do you remember called walking around just like at stores hearing people just speaking Hawaiian? Uh, no, if it if it I did hear it, it's probably somebody that was at my school. But even families who send their kids to Hawaiian immersion schools, they don't speak Hawaiian to each other. Like at home, sometimes the parents don't know Hawaiian. Yeah. So sometimes I hear it these days, just because it, it has grown so much. Um, you overhear a conversation, you hear somebody talk, yeah, like it's, telling their kids something in Hawaiian. It's cool to hear. It's cool to hear, and yeah. it's kind of it's almost shocking. I was at Whole Foods, mm-hmm. that like the the Kailua Whole Foods. Okay, yeah. I just gotta like clarify. Um, and I was in the other aisle, and I heard two people speaking Hawaiian. I'm like, whoa, mm-hmm. what's happening? Like the fact that I was shocked, and then it was two holiday people wow. on top of that. Yeah. And I was like, okay, so and it's not the first time in the last few years that just how shocked I was to actually hear people speaking Hawaiian. And then I had to really think about that. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Like anywhere else in the world you go, like you have to learn some of the language or you're going to at least hearing people speak the language. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's like even for us living here. It's foreign. And it it has like 75 percent of my Mm -hmm. my friends are are Hawaiian and that I I'm shocked when I hear it like in a natural setting. Right. Yeah. It's the equivalent to me. Like, I don't know if anyone has ever studied abroad before. It's when I'm in Argentina and everybody speaks English and then I hear some English speakers and I look, I'm, and I, I'm like, Oh wow. English speakers. And then you want to be friends with them. So it's like kind of that shocking where it's like, what is that? And I hear Hawaiian. I'm like, Oh, I want to go be friends with them. Yeah. It's so you're like rare. In the Midwest it's and you hear so Chinese, rare. You're like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and anybody up, living, huh? you know, on the continent, if they hear, if they hear somebody with a pigeon accent, yeah. see somebody with a Hawaii shirt, it's that you same see, feeling. You hear like, the bracelets coming. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. You hear the twenty bracelets. You're like, I know that jingling. sound. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very true. All right. Next question comes from Musubi underscore Mama. She <laughs> wants to know. Great name, huh? I know. I love it. What was your dream job before getting into social media? My dream job was to work in music, to be a promoter. I wanted to be a concert promoter or in film. Oh, so you did do your dream job. Yeah, pretty much doing it. That's pretty cool. Yes, no, I didn't. I, and I'm doing sh- funny thing now. I'm working on events now. So, yeah, kind of kind of worked out. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Okay, well, easy, easy answer. <laughs> okay, w- next question comes from coin.hst. This person wants to know how... Did, Oh, sorry. Do you treat Instagram slash posting hours as work hours? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, like, you have to set time aside. It's This is a mental health thing for me. Like, I set time aside, and then I have to cut myself off. Like, I literally have alarms going off now, and to remind myself, anytime I'm on the platform, like, this is your slot, this is your time period, and here's your hours, and and these are the times that you're not going to touch it. Mm. that's like that's like hugely important for everybody right now i feel like i have to learn that because i swear i always have work to do it's a boundary you gotta set it's Mm. a digital boundary okay so you have those timers where it's like your screen time is or you spent too much time on here it's locked you can extend it i just set it on my phone like okay i'm starting this thing and i'm and it's gonna cut me off at two hours Mm -hmm. you just have to because it's draining super it's super draining there's just like there's a lot of energy happens even digitally like you got to remember, like, you know, for God, all the years that we've existed, we find new and terrible ways to destroy each other, right, mm-hmm. through weapons and whatever. And now we have social media, which is just an extension of our world, but it's a digital world. And now words are weapons. And they're invisible weapons that we're being, like, attacked by all the time. Mm-hmm. And these platforms are not geared to help you in any way. They really aren't. So, like, this is our personal, like, responsibility that we have to start... We, we, like these are things are happening to us right now mm-hmm. that we probably don't even really understand. Like I, I just know it because when I've taken huge social media breaks, I've been able to see the difference. Um, I get palpitations when I'm on social media too much. And when oh. I stop, it goes away. 
You know what I mean? So like there's physical reactions our body are having from some of this stuff. So we have to like, yeah, just set that time aside, especially if you work for yourself, like you do a lot of work, you're this your own company, you're not working for everyone else. So you have to like treat it when we're all working remotely, like set those times in your hours and try to stick to them. And just giving yourself a pattern helps a lot. Yeah. It's really hard not to work all the time, anytime. I right. mean, really when I'm on social media, I'm not scrolling. I'm just posting stuff, responding to things, sending messages. Um, so it's hard to just like... Do you sleep well? I do, I think, yeah, I get... Like you sleep like a specific hours. time period and you wake up at it like all the way um, through? I think I sleep on... I always tell myself I want to sleep by like 11, but I a lot of times if I get into work, I'm one of those people, if I get in the zone, I, I like to ride that wave. Mm-hmm. I don't like... Like the, like the other week when I, I was working in Arizona... I was my I had a flight that I had to be at the airport around five something. So I got home around like 11 and I was packing everything and I just started having this inspiration to, you know, pot, work in the podcast stuff. And instead of sleeping for like four hours, I just worked all the way through. I just put up an all nighter and I was just like, it's really rare, rare that I'm in a room by myself with no distraction. So let me just like r- ride this out. And I just worked for like that's four good because your batch creating is good because then you mm-hmm. can like batch create and then schedule and then take time off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then that, so that's how I am. I, I would like, it comes in waves, my, mm-hmm. of the busyness, you know, because some days I'm just like, it's not creative. I, I don't, what? You're not creative. Like some days you don't feel it, you know? Yeah, no, but it's really more just like, I have so much to do in all different jobs. My part time job, my mm-hmm. Hawaii verse job, my podcast job, these other side projects. And it feels like it'll never end. Yeah. And then eventually I get to a point where I can just go to Hilo relax a little bit but still do a little work and then that's kind of like my relaxation Mm -hmm. but for me social media is like constant because with the podcast I have to post every single day yeah that's that's what we do you know we try to dominate social media yeah post every single day so that I'm always listening to the next episode giving clips to Jordan he's cutting it up it's like it's a never-ending cycle. But it's okay to stop. Yeah. You realize that, right? No, it's not. It <laughs> I'm is. <just> joking. <laughs> I, I know, can't. but it feels Dania, like that. I cannot. I know. I can't stop. <laughs> like, but it's true. No, but it's, it's, it feels like that, right? Because mm-hmm. you feel like, if, what if I stop and I lose all this momentum? But you really don't. Like, the interesting thing is now I'm noticing, and I hope it may not be that way forever. But if you take a pause on your story for like maybe 48 hours, or even your Instagram and you post again, it revives your algorithm. Hmm. Like sometimes you kind of exhaust that. Like, in, and at the end of the day, it, it, it's like you can disappear for, I've done it, disappeared for weeks and come back and just takes a couple of days, gets right back into it. So hmm. it's okay to like not feel like you have to do it every day. Yeah. I know that the platforms are telling you that they want you to be, they make mm-hmm. money for you to be on there every day. Yeah. So it's always a, a struggle. Yeah. So we're all, we're all learning. We're how to be mindful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, I try to just not, what I do now is I just don't um, go on my phone in the morning in bed. Oh, yeah. So Keep it away I, from the I bed. Wait, yeah. uh, like I may have my phone there so I can have my alarm, but I don't grab it. I just If I grab it, I go up outside of the, the bedroom and then I start working. Because once I s- start working, then I'm just like in the zone. It's like... It's like the equivalent. I'm like a binge eater, binge snacker. <laughs> yeah, you're so, binge social yeah, media. Yeah, so <laughs> as soon as I start working, then I just like go in. Like I, I can't like do anything else until I'm done with that thing. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. get it all done. Yeah, exactly. Same with movies, TV shows. Yeah, oh like, yeah. I binge all the yeah. way through. I'll be like three days later, I'm like, Ugh, I was only going to watch one episode. Yeah, I know my girlfriend is always just like, we can just watch it another time. I'm just like, but we watched John Wick 1 and 2 we might as well finish three. three. I, I got to know. <laughs> I got to like know what happened. <laughs> yeah. I need closure. <laughs> so and the phones it. are just so addicting to pick up. I, mm-hmm. I forgot mine today and I was at my, I was at my um, hairdressers earlier and I actually grabbed her like office phone just cause it was sitting there yeah. and just picked it up and walked off with it. And I had to come back and bring it back <laughs> because I'm like, I'm so used to having a phone in my hand yeah. and I didn't have my phone with me and I felt like something was wrong. I'm yeah. Like, it just felt so weird that <laughs> I actually accidentally stole a phone that wasn't mine. Yeah. <laughs> like, girl, that, you got a problem. <laughs> no, that's so true because when you have something that's so routine. So for me, when I leave the house, it's always wallet on the left mm-hmm. side, phone on the right side, and maybe keys, keys on, on my left side yeah. or in my hand. And I remember one time I left without my wallet. Like I didn't need it. And, like, I was, like, tapping because I always tap to make sure yeah, it's there. Yeah, yeah, pat, pat. Um, 
And I was like, oh my gosh, where's my wallet? Like I thought I, I like lost it, it fell out <laughs> or something. Then I realized like, oh, it's just um, in my bag or it's at home or something. I didn't bring it on purpose, but it's that feeling that you're so accustomed to yeah. it. Yeah, it so, feels like you're missing something. Yeah, yeah. Or even like with phone, like say you want to take your phone to the bathroom and use the bathroom and then like you don't have it. It's like, oh my gosh, oh. what do I do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and girls, we do the pats because everything's in our bras. <laughs> yeah. So we're like, oh, I got my ID. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's so true. Okay, next question. Um, well, it's, it's kind of similar to what we were just talking about. Miss Chris K wants to know, is it hard to keep Instagram as work and not get distracted by scrolling? Yeah, absolutely. Like, this is why I like Facebook, um, well, creator or business, because you can go in and do your work without seeing all the noise, right? Mm. Like, it's really, TikTok doesn't have that, like, but consuming social media is a really, if you're a creator, is kind of important. Mm -hmm. That's why, again, I have those those boundaries, right? Like, if I if I start, if I'm going to do a scrolling, if I see something, I'm going to scroll, I'm going to, like, set a time, half an hour. Mm -hmm. Make your notes, save what you're going to save, and then just be done. And then, yeah, it's just about structure. Like, I hate that I have to do that, because I'm so, I'm such a, like, soulful media person. Like, I call it soulful media, like people who got into social media because we like storytelling. We do it from the heart. Um, I'm not a scheduling person. Like mm -hmm. people who are social media managers, I've turned jobs down where they're like, okay, and we're going to want you to like have use the scheduling system and you're going to have to block out. Them. I'm like, mm, no, I can't do that. <laughs> Sorry. I don't like that either. Mm, I don't. Because mm -hmm. I feel like it, you lose like what makes the, the post work. I feel mm -hmm. energy is transferred when we're doing this stuff. If mm -hmm. you like something you believe in it, you're passionate about it, and you put it out there, it'll work more than something mm -hmm. that you're just like, I need to fill this space, mm -hmm. and it's got to go at this time. Like, that drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't be that kind of social media manager. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of why we have to have restrictions, because you're like me. We, we, we get an inspiration, and, it's, and suddenly we're just like, we're just going to do this right now. Mm -hmm. But we have to, like, figure out ways to remind ourselves to turn it off. Yeah. Like, no is your friend, right? <laughs> like, being able yeah, to say no yeah. to yourself, like, nope. I had a commitment. I'm going to do this. Even if it's binge watching one of your shows, just get mm -hmm. off your phone, get off the social media, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. A lot of times you're just watching TV show, but also like scrolling on something or doing something on your we phone. We can't even, we can't yeah. even like focus on one thing anymore. Our brains mm -hmm. are being wired to be like, eh, eh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah. Like. You need more than one stimulant yeah. at all times. I know. Yeah. I, have you ever tried sitting quietly? Like meditation for me is like, I'm, I'm doing this now. I'm getting mm -hmm. better at it. But man, the first like... <laughs> It was like the stuff that was going through. I'm sitting there and I'm like, meditate, girl. Just don't think of it. He's like, don't think of anything. I'm, and now I'm thinking of everything, right? <laughs> and my mind's just going, okay. And I'm thinking about what I had earlier. And then I'm thinking about some random thing that happened to me 20 years ago. And it's like, stop. Yeah. <laughs> my brain won't stop. It, it's tough that. How much uh, time has gone by? Do you think it's been a minute? <laughs> I just can't. Yeah. I really have to like have discipline because even if I'm doing a workout in my living room, and my phone's over there. I hear it vibrating while working out. I'm just like, oh, I want to check what that and notification then you start wondering, is. Who's that? It's like, yeah, oh, is it important? Do I have to answer some something? Especially if they do it twice. You're yeah, like, okay, exactly. Wrong. And I'm just like, oh, just focus, work out, just focus. <laughs> but you do yoga and then you're in Shavasana, just lying down, not doing anything. You're like, okay, wait, I think I have to get up already because I have to um, send an email or whatever. I it, turn it off and I do, I've been doing VR meditation. Do you use VR yeah, at all? No, no. I, I just tried VR, um, like this pod thing where you it kind of moves yeah, you yeah. and it feels like you're on a whatever. Um, and it's super cool. It's super, super cool. I love it. It's great exercise. I've been doing like Beat Saber and I've been boxing. Oh, that's cool. VR boxing is a work, like a workout I've never mm -hmm. imagined would be. And I get so angry, like when the guy's hitting me, and I'm like, mm. <laughs> and then my head's, and I'm starting to kick. He's like, it doesn't detect your feet. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Take I just this start anyways. going. I get so mad. I'm like, <laughs> like I just get super angry because it's there's literally a guy like in front of you punching you, and you're kidding. <laughs> your brain is like in red, like alarm mode. <laughs> yeah, know? that's funny. But it has a great meditation. Like I like it because it, you could turn your phone off, but it allows you to like sit in a space anywhere in the mm. world. You know, and if you have earbuds in, you can have like the sounds and you could just completely shut off everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll check that out later on. Meditation is what is something I, I couldn't really get into. I feel like my mind moves too you fast. You need guided meditation. Yeah, maybe. And I like I like to, you know, have my meditation therapy, whatever, as a sport. Anything that I'm mm, doing that's active. Like physical that's, exertion. That's not, oh, um, that I don't have to like be on my phone mm -hmm. so like surfing i don't need to i can't be on my phone right. i gotta leave it in the car 
Where you're forced to yeah, get away from it, yeah. Soccer, basketball, I can't be on my phone. I'm yeah. actively, my brain is actively Active. doing something. Yeah. So I think that's like the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, last question comes from Davin Morton. He wants to know, what is your favorite memory from the Vine days? Oh, my gosh. We, we used to do these things called Viner's Luau, mm-hmm. where everybody would start a song. So I, like we did this cruising, right? And so somebody would do the first half of the song of the lyric and then somebody else would do the second and then we would string them all together into like the whole song. Mm. It was just like fun things that we used to do like that. That was one of the things I liked about Vine. It's kind of similar to TikTok, I think, Mm -hmm. where you're collaborating without really intending to collaborate Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. by just coming up with all of these really cool things. Or we would do like roasting things or somebody would come up with like some crazy challenge and um, we would all participate in it. I, I miss that. I definitely miss that because I feel like everyone got really serious and some of the fun went away. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, definitely. The Hawaii Viners Luau. We need to bring that back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Mahalo, everybody, for the Instagram questions. Make sure you leave some for our, our next guest. And maybe your question will make it on the podcast. And remember to be the aloha you wish to see in the world, just like our sponsor, Shaka Tea. All right. So coming to the back end of the podcast. And what's interesting is that you are a gypsy. Yes. And um, Sinti. Sinti. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I don't know too much about this. So gypsy is like the, how would you explain that? So gypsy is actually a term that like gypsies actually don't really like. I don't mind it. It's fine because if I say I'm Sinti, you don't know what I mean. Okay. Um, So I usually have to say Sinti or is what you would know as a gypsy. Gypsies comes with such like weird stereotypes. You know, Mm -hmm. one is that we're mythical unicorn creatures. People don't know we're a real culture. Mm -hmm. Um, Or that they picture like these, you know, jewelry thieves. You know, I've seen one of that in France and I ran away from one of them. Yeah. And the funny part about it is like, especially the ones that come here, they're not even gypsy. Mm -hmm. Um, They're anytime that we get people here, like there's a Romani gypsy is not Romanian. So a lot of people are confused by Romani gypsy, hmm. um, and they just think that when Rom- Romanians come here, they're all gypsies. And a lot of these 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 gyp- uh, jewelry people are Romanians. Um, so basically, gypsies originated in India a thousand years ago, and they were pushed hmm. pushed out of northern India. Um, so they were driven off their land, and then kind of migrated in different directions. And that's why there's so many different tribes in different areas. So Sinti is European. So my family ended up in Germany. Um, there's, you know, Manus gypsies, there's, there's like the French gypsies, there's Spanish gypsies, there's gypsies in all different types of, you know, the country. Um, Romney gypsies or Romney shells are the ones you see in America. When you saw the shows that came out, My Big Fat Gypsy Weddings, mm-hmm. those are American gypsies. And that's the equivalent of like African-American versus, versus Africans. Mm. Um, African-Americans, if you switch their roles, they probably wouldn't have any idea what's going on in the culture, mm-hmm. but they come from the same bloodline. Okay. So the shows are kind of hard because they're nothing like what traditional gypsy culture is. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm Sinti and my, I come from a, my grandparents were in concentration camps. They survived concentration camps. So my great aunt, my grandmother, my grandfather, they all have the tattoos. They were in Dachau and Auschwitz and they survived through their skills. And a lot of gypsies that didn't make it through the camps, the way, the way they survived was, um, through skills like music was one. Mm-hmm. My grandfather was a musician. Um, horse training. They were skilled horsemen. Um, uh, some, my, my, my great uncle, Jacob Bamberger, was a boxer. And mm-hmm. he was like, he fought, they put him in the ring with the, with the Nazis. And that's how he survived. Um, so, yeah, it's a di- very diverse culture, very misunderstood. But we became basically a race of homeless people because we were driven out of our land. And so we just kind of had to, integrate wherever we could. And so our family lived, they live in homes. We don't live in caravans anymore. Um, but because at one time gypsies were only legal when they were moving, they weren't allowed to stay in any places. And in the beginning, everybody integrated well because mm-hmm. the gypsies had a lot of skills that, and they were skilled laborers. They had a lot of skills that everybody needed, but ultimately became because they're such a closed culture. They don't share that. We mm-hmm. don't share our language. We don't share anything. People, you become a scapegoat, mm-hmm. you know, of like every problem. And that's kind of what started to happen. And of course, there's terrible poverty, right? There's there's our gypsies around the world. They they are beggars and thieves, just like there are in any other culture. But it, because of what had started to happen was the um, police, and they would come up with a thing called gypsy scams. And so then any scam that was run like that would be called a gypsy scam, even though 
anyone was doing these scams. Mm -hmm. So, so it's hard to tell people. I have only recently publicly talked about being gypsy because of how discriminate, how you're so discriminated against. Mm -hmm. You know, so even our family, you know, our family is very similar to Native Americans who told their kids to say they were Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Like that's why my name's Daniela. My mom's name's Rosita. My cousin's Manana. We have Hispanic names wow. because. Like the Native Americans say, if you tell people you're Mexican, you'll you'll learn discrimination. But if you tell them who you really are, you're going to learn hatred. And so that's what we were we were grown grown up to tell people was that we were not who we were, because otherwise we would know hate. Wow. So it's like the equivalent of how some people got English names, like right? In um, Native American boarding to schools assimilate. and like, you know, the uh, was it Carl Carlson School, mm. um, and like uh, a lot of people have English last names because it was given to them or right so that wow. they could be more accepted because yeah. of you know the the horrible you know the way we're being treated yeah That's why we lose so much of our culture I mean our people I love that social media has come around when it did for Hawaiians because I see such amazing uprising mm -hmm. and, a, and a reconnection and a decolonization process happening that didn't happen for our people because we we were already so like broken you know, and by the time, like, we had no way to, to unite anybody. And because mm -hmm. we have gypsies in so many different areas, the language, you know, started to change. Because we have Romanus, which is our language, but it, in, in Sinti's, also mix it with German. So we try to speak to someone in, in French, in France, or, Span or Spanish gypsy, like, we can't really communicate. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's the constant in, inner fighting that started to happen. Like, you know, the gypsies, who's gypsy enough? Who's really gypsy? Who, this, this isn't traditional. That's not wow. traditional. I see some of that happening here, too. It's like, yeah, it's so similar to Hawaiian it culture is. and, like, just growing up in Hawaii. If you want to know what yeah. a people look like when they've lost their land, you just have to look at us. Mm -hmm. That's why they're. That's why you guys got to fight and, so hard. And that that's why they have that nomadic lifestyle is because mm -hmm. they have no home. And it's not, it, right. it wasn't by choice. No. It's just because they really have nowhere to go, that's so the they got to keep That's the difference between moving. colonizers and and. And us is that they had choices. They could pick and choose where they wanted to go and make it mm -hmm. like what they wanted. We didn't have choices. Yeah. We were thrown away, like thrown off of our land, and we had no, we had to be a guest in everyone's home. And and um, I don't know. I've never met another gypsy here that, and and, and I know they're here. They're mm -hmm. just not going to say it. And it's kind you of know? like uh, something that people are ashamed of. Oh, absolutely. Like my mom's mm -hmm. probably going to be really mad. I'm talking about it. She doesn't yeah, like it because it's because I've been I've had people straight up tell me the only when I heard that I. Like, people that I'm friends with now, but, like, they were just, like, I didn't even want to, like, no, I, I was afraid. I didn't want to work with you. I didn't trust you. Yeah. Wow. It's crazy. It's hard to hear. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure the population is very small in Hawaii, but other places, I guess, like, I'm sure there's communities yeah. and groups. Um. When I go home, I'm, you know, my family runs the um, Sinti and Roma Holocaust Museum in Heidelberg. So you can actually see the Holocaust Museum from the gypsy perspective. And where, where is that? It's in Heidelberg, Germany. Yeah. Oh, wow. So if anybody goes to Heidelberg, you can actually go. Mm. Um, it's pretty intense. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Very hard I, to go through. Um, but yeah. it tells the story because the Holocaust museums mostly show the, the from the Jewish Jews. perspective, and there were, you know, blacks, mm -hmm. gays, everybody was. There was so many victims, mm -hmm. and the gypsies were a part of that. So, I know all the crazy stories. It's definitely like one of the reasons I fight so hard. Like I fight for my people, but I took a break because it got really, really hard. <laughs> And I take up the, the sword and shield a lot for my <coughs> Hawaiian friends. And I tell them all the time, like, I see how exhausted you are constantly trying to explain who you are. That is the hardest thing that I had to go through, constantly trying to tell people over and over again who you are. And, like, defending who you are mm -hmm. and trying to get people to understand who you are. It's, mm -hmm. it's exhausting. And I see this a lot in social media now. And I see people saying... The same thing I said, you know, 20 years ago, which was, I don't owe you shit. Mm -hmm. you, I, don't owe you, I, I don't need to tell you who I am. Quit asking me questions. I don't owe you any explanations. And I had an elder set me straight, and they're like, Danny, your grandmother and your aunties and all them, they didn't have a voice. You have a voice. You let everybody else tell your stories. Like, white people told our stories this whole time. We didn't have anyone telling our stories. You guys need to tell our stories. Because otherwise, they just now you got all that stuff out there, and all these people that are saying these things are taught that they were taught that by mm -hmm. all this misinformation. So, you don't have to be the one to tell the story, but to say that you don't owe the, that, that's you got to correct yourself on that because we do have a voice now, and it's and we have to remember that we were lied to, and so was everybody else. 
So now we got to tell those stories and we got to set the record straight. Mm-hmm. It's hard. Wow. Because it's ingrained in us, right? A lot of mm-hmm. that stuff. Like we're still, even now we're still learning how we've misused Hawaiian words. Like remember we were talking about a kole. Like how mm-hmm. long did we misuse that word? Yeah. Right? Akole maluna. <laughs> buttholes to the sky. Right. Buttholes up. Right? <laughs> like wet akole. Yeah. <laughs> wet buttholes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, there's so many words that I've recently, like oh, there was another one too that came up the other day and I'm like, man, we just... Like, it's funny that we're learning all this stuff now, but it's great. And, some, and I wish that my people had the same thing, but we're just, we're so, we fight so much. We can't get organized yeah. anymore, you know? And that's the sad part, too, when you have this civil war between your own culture, where it, I guess the equivalent here would be Hawaiians fighting with Hawaiians. Yeah. You're not doing that correct. You're not doing that the way we want it to be. You know, there's the traditional list, there's the modern people, you know, there's like, Oh, if you're not speaking like this, then are you even speaking Hawaiian? They're, they're just like, oh, you're not in the lo'i every single day. You're not Hawaiian. And then the question comes up, am I Hawaiian enough? All the time. All the time. Yeah. And, and that's the worst part because it's like we were talking about this earlier. We're being influenced by outside social media. Everything that's happening around is now trickling into here. And that's what people got to remember. Like, is this really coming from your do you really believe that? Or is this like an insecurity that's happening? This is all coming from other things, you know, mm-hmm. like, like colonization. I love that. I forgot who said this, but they're like, colonization isn't just about taking people's li- land over. You know what I mean? I spend a lot of time Holly explaining this to, to visitors <laughs> here all the time, by the way, because they're like, I didn't take their land. Why are they mad? Why are they mad? I wasn't the one that took their land. Colonization wasn't about that. It's about people come to a place. You could be an individual person. You went into that place and you tried to make it like your place. You tried to change it. Like, That is a very, like, colonizer mindset. That is people who didn't have their own land and are used to taking other people's land. Those are people who had choices. And you're coming into a place where people who don't have those choices. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you you can understand that, you know, um, one of the things that the elders also reminded me, too, was um, that we have... um, he, he said to stop, like, I used to come so aggressively at people, right, when they would use our name. And believe me, Gypsy's been used to, oh God, you guys, like, you've seen brands, you know, they, have, they set up this whole, like, crazy stuff that doesn't exist, and they make money off of it. And I used to get so mad. And then I had to be reminded by the elders, like, Danny, like, we're so few, and it's time we get allies. We need allies. Mm-hmm. So you don't, don't like, don't keep arguing with people who are committed to misunderstanding you. Try to have a conversation with them. Mm-hmm. Try to give them, educate them. And if you can tell they're not going to listen, move on. Move on. Quit arguing with these people. You're never going to change their mind. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what I do now. Like, I, even, even here on 808 Viral, like, I will try with somebody. And what's interesting is I will notice that Hawaiians will argue and argue and argue with somebody. And then the minute a non-Hawaiian comes in and explains it to them, they listen why is that? Hmm. So, I like, I, I mean, I just, I don't know what it is. If they're just feeling attacked or they just don't believe it. Why would you listen? You know, if I come in and say something and now, now they're suddenly listening, you know what I mean? Like, it's just sad. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I constantly, like, trying to, like, my big role on 808 Viral is to never, like, speak for Hawaiians but amplify and assist. Using my own experiences and trying to, like, help them in any way they can because I feel like it's kind of too late for my people to be mm-hmm. honest so people are like how come you're doing so much activism for Hawaiians and like because it's too late I feel like it's too late I hate to say that I really do and I maybe I'll pick up that 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 mission again someday but we've tried you know and, and we're so broken and like I just Hawaiians have a chance right mm-hmm. now you know what I mean and like they're actually coming back like they're coming back from it they're, it's it's amazing I never, I never thought it was going to be like this. Yeah. So. It's super cool to see and be p- a part of that movement yeah. because it is real and it is strong. And it's, it's one of those things that we want people to jump on the bandwagon because for how many years we weren't able to do what we do as Hawaiians, practice our language, practice our hula, our chants. Um, so now it's like, accept it it's cool it's like everybody wants to be hawaiian everybody yeah. wants to you know get in the law or plant i try to food. remind people that like to, you know you guys keep saying appropriation and but you remember when people didn't want to be like you or didn't want like to have anything to do with you and if they're copying you wow now you're cool mm-hmm. you know like 
is it appropriation or is it like an appreciation? They're finally understanding like there's a difference, you know? Yes. I, I think it's your intention and how you do it. It separates the, you know, appreciation and appropriation. Yes. For sure. And the, yeah. And I, I've, I've learned that um, through my travels as well. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, def- definitely. It's an understandable life. fear because yeah. you teach somebody something and then you're not, or are they going to go and now create a, like learn everything you didn't? Because we see it, we're seeing it happening now, even with influencers coming into this space, they're taking away from, like, we've seen it with, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, but I don't want to like out <laughs> this person, but like, you know, with a certain sport, for instance, somebody uh-huh. comes out from out of nowhere and, and picks up in an, in an area popular with this thing, learns from these people and then creates an entire brand, ditches all of them and then does this whole like national brand thing. Like they're the only person that's ever done it. Yeah. That's gotta, what pisses people off. You got to, you got to whisper the name to me. after. I will tell me. you, <laughs> I will show you because some of the people that follow it about, we already know <laughs> because we had a real problem with this person. Ooh, but, yeah. I love spill the shock of tea. Cause it's just like stupid. Like don't call up a ladder and then pull it up after you, especially when people were helping you with a space that they were already occupying. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, and, and the, the and what I love about this, I, te- I do teaching a lot for the YWCA, um, enterprising women of color. And what I'm learning is that Hawaiians are coming on there because they're like realizing like the reason why I'm not successful in this space because I didn't learn the things, same thing these people learn. Now I'm going to learn it. And it's funny because they're taking over mm. and people don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I think it's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> these brands ever watch out. A lot of these brands, because honestly, we do snacks here better than most of these other fake local snack places that don't come from here. Mm -hmm. Like we just need to give them a space to fulfill that and work. You know what I mean? Like a massive kit. Make that happen. You need to make Massive. like a huge area where a bunch of snack people can come in, like Willy Wonk, Willy mm-hmm. Kanaka, and the, and Willy the chocolate Kanaka. factories. <laughs> Willy Kamaka and the ch- <laughs> Willy Kamaka and the chocolate factory. <laughs> you could have all these people coming and making snacks and shipping them all over the world. We have an idea um, for kind of a Willy Wonka giveaway kind of thing. That that might um, I won't say much about it, but Willy Kamaka. I don't know. Maybe you we'll call, call it, it Willy that. Kamaka. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Willy Kamaka. Willy Kamaka, golden ticket for something coming up. Stay tuned. I like it. Thanks for <laughs> that idea. Okay. Super interesting history. I don't know pretty much anything about gypsies be- besides what I've seen in uh, Peaky Blinders. I don't know if you ever watched that. Mm-mm. They're they're gypsies. And um, from what I've seen, traveling Europe. And then um, the boxer, uh, Tyson Fury, he's the gypsy king. That's oh, basically yeah. my whole knowledge of, of gypsies. And that so. movie with Brad Pitt that everybody always always talks about. What is that one where Brad Pitt's a boxer too, right? Oh, I don't, I don't know that one. Yeah, there's, there's actually, I'm trying to think of, I don't really can't even be honest with you. I can't think of any like things I've seen that's been really very accurate. Yeah, I mean, I, t- I totally get it because it's the same with Hawaiian, how people would tell our history from like their perspective. Um, but it's interesting. The more I talk with people, Native Americans, mm. uh, you know, Gypsy now, and um, even like Okinawans, um, you replace you replace Native Hawaiian and all the things that happened to us with any other oppressed minority, and it's so similar. Similar. Super similar. Yeah, you guys. I mean, I was telling like you can really see what's going to happen if you pay attention to the other cultures. You kind of know what what roads to take because you can learn from us all you know what I mean like the the mistakes that we made that's that's been my big thing is I just when I see my friends fighting I just tell them the mistakes that I made Mm -hmm. so they can keep it in mind you know what I mean like especially when I see them getting so upset and angry all the time I'm like man you got to like figure out how to get past that quick yeah put your energy where you can make a difference yeah for sure okay one thing I want to ask you because you're you know grew up here you have been living here Mm -hmm. for ever since you moved back from <laughs> Colorado. Uh, and then you're just, you know, queen of social media. You see <laughs> you see everything. You're like the eye of Sauron. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. What will it take for somebody who isn't Hawaiian to be accepted as a local here um, and somebody who doesn't look Hawaiian, somebody who is... Fair skin, um, they're just gonna see you and be like, "Oh, you're probably from Kailua or mm-hmm. something. You just probably moved here, however long ago." Do you think those people will ever be accepted? I mean, maybe tell some personal history if you ever had problems with that, like people not accepting you 
for yeah. whatever reason. Um, it's interesting. Um, I was telling you before, I spent a lot of time Howley explaining to people that either moved here or want to come here. They ask that question a lot, like, what can I do to not, you know, piss people off or how can I integrate better here? And I, for me, it really just comes down to respect. Like, I try to tell them the same thing. Like, Hawaiians can sense if you're pandering, okay? So don't be fake. And if you be real and, you're, and you understand them and you come, like, from a non colonization mindset where you're not trying to change anything, but you're trying to come in and learn you're in another place and you're adapting your life to what's happening around you and get out of your comfort zone and go meet people and go actually hang out and show, you know what I mean? Like go with your coworkers. If they invite you somewhere, go, you know what I mean? Like, um, and, and it has, like, I always, I always tell people a certain amount of books to read before you come here too. like, you know, read like broken trust or like, you know, there's a p- p- bunch of books that I give them. I'm like, try to understand what happened here so you can speak from that mm-hmm. and don't pander because they'll smell it. Mm-hmm. It's, that's, I mean, it's really that simple. Cause they'll I, smell I mean, a holly look, on you. Right. And then they really, cause, cause holly, like, they're like, so, you know, they're so racist. They're so racist. It's like, you know, it, it, there is, there is definitely a part of that too, where they're going to see you and they're going to, but it's be from experience. You have to understand, like, I even understand that. Like, I don't have a problem because I, I'm around I know the culture. I I lived here. I integrated into it. I know it. I know it more than my own. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, it's just about the listening, being heard, and not trying. And also remembering, too, that for every, like, skill or gift that a local shows you, know that there's a hundred more things they do better than you that you're not seeing yet. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest thing people come in here, I see, like, like, companies coming in and hiring workers and talking down to them, not realizing that all these people probably know more than you do, but they're not yeah. saying anything. Mm-hmm. So I try to remind them, like, they don't speak up a lot when they know things. They're going to let you sit there and explain and, and, and talk to them at, at a, like, this is how it's done, and not realizing they probably already know it and know it better than you. So yeah. just be really careful how you're talking to people. Ask them questions. Try to draw it out of them so you understand where they're coming from, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, and that's, that's just the Hawaiian culture is, mm-hmm. you know, to be ha-ha, humble, you know, don't s- speak when you're not supposed to, pa'akavaha. Shut your mouth, hold like go pepe out, listen, you know. With so that's what we're, ta- right. we're taught, you know. And a, a lot of our culture here is Asian as well. So, you know, Japanese, it's like, you know, very respectful. Right. So you don't really you're not gonna see that too much. You don't see that bragging or yeah. that, you know, talk yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So did you ever have like a problem growing up, like people? not accepting you yeah in high school I mean it's funny because all the people that I had problems with were all were all good now but like back <laughs> then I mean I was just a different kid like I had tattoos before people had tattoos like you know you in St. Francis you had co- like you had your um uniforms and I never wore them how I was supposed to I had a guy picking me up on a motorcycle I was driving motorcycles like I was the rebel I was like <laughs> and I really actually kind of stayed to myself a lot I did exactly the opposite of what I'm telling you now like I didn't feel like I related with anybody and it wasn't that I didn't like them or anything. It was just that I felt like, and, and I was treated as such, you know. But then eventually, like, weirdly over time, like, we ended up kind of coming, growing up, you know, and really yeah. seeing, you know what I mean? And now we're all like, we, we laugh about it now. We're like, Dan, Danny, remember when you did this? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I'm so cringe. Sorry. <laughs> That's Sorry funny. I brought weed to school and got everybody high behind their, you know. <laughs> I mean, I spent more time in the convent. Like, it's, when you got punished there, you had to go in the convent and clean it. I was there all the time. I actually liked it there. It was very peaceful. And it was clean, so you really didn't have to clean much. <laughs> but, like, the nuns knew me, and they were like, Danny, you know, I'm like, I was picking, had to pick mangoes out of the tree. I was, like, dusting, making beds. Um, yeah. <laughs> Constant. I just couldn't stay out of trouble. I don't know why. Yeah. I'm better now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> All right, yeah, that, that, that's a good answer. I mean, at the end of the day, respect. That and goes I have a some of that way. happening now a little bit. I, I have had people come at me a few times for running 808 Viral. Yeah. But I remind them, like, 808 Viral is kind of like a board. I mm-hmm. have 12 to 14 people that I consult with mm-hmm. about certain things all the time, especially if it's cultural. Yeah. I will go to, like four or five different people and ask every, until I get it right mm-hmm. before I put anything out. So it's never yeah. just me uh, when it comes to think like the important things. So yeah. I think there's a valid concern that, 
okay, you're not Hawaiian, but you're in Hawaii and you're running a large platform. How can we trust you to like do the right thing? So I think we've established that for the years that we're doing pretty good with that. Yeah, you know? yeah. And I think it just comes as a shock because they're like, <laughs> they wonder who who's running this. They and think like, I'm a guy. From yeah, one. <laughs> they think you're like a hungry, hungry Hawaiian yeah, they or think something. I'm, I, Literally, when we yeah. were at Co Common Kings, somebody said, hey, wait, Barrel's here. And they were pointing to Isaac because he was there. Yeah. And they're pointing to Isaac. And I'm like, and they're like, no, that's her. And they're like, who? And they were looking, and I was next to Eddie Dowd. And they're like, Eddie? <laughs> like, no, it's her. That's so funny. <laughs> I know, because even when we first met, I, I was I was surprised. I yeah. was like, what? I just didn't expect you that. You didn't expect yeah. that. But yeah. I know. I mean, it could just be an ignorant way of thinking, you know? But No, I'm just, because I mean, well, I, I get it. Because like, yeah. and people don't realize I write a lot of the memes. And like, I always tell people I'm fluent in pigeon. I, ter <laughs> I sound terrible when I talk it. <laughs> uh, I sound like Beth Chapman. <laughs> but like, it's, <laughs> but like, but I'm fluent yeah. uh, and I can write all the jokes and you will never know. Mm -hmm. Because I mean, I've lived here. I paid attention. Yeah. You know, of course. It was part of like, like, it was my life. You know, this is for me, like the only home I really know. Mm -hmm. So... I, and I feel a, a, a huge responsibility. Like, this platform wasn't intentional. Like, it, it blew up, and I'm like, now I feel a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. Because I know, like, I know the kind of power that it has. And it's scary. So it freaks me out sometimes. <laughs> it's a lot so of power. It's a lot of power. Yeah. And I could do, like, people are always like, man, I hope nobody ever pisses you off. And people piss me off all the time. I just don't use, I don't believe in using a platform to, like, that's just, that's a huge imbalance of power. Yeah. Like, if I'm, if I'm going to put something out about somebody, I'm going to give them an opportunity to have their side. But if I weaponized social media against people, I wouldn't have this platform. Yeah. There, there was something would happen, like, karmically. For <laughs> yeah, me, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? The reason it does so well, because I generally care and put like a lot of thought and effort into making mm -hmm. sure that you know it's inclusive and that we're trying to help the community as much as we, just as much as we can I mean mm -hmm. we've raised millions of dollars you know for people yeah. I mean you guys do such a great job and I've collaborated on some videos I know even when the guy Mark Yan came mm -hmm. and uh, we shared another like 10 rules for holiday whatever that oh, was yeah. a really popular one <laughs> but it, it just provides the small guys you know a bigger platform to yes. share share their story I'll amplify their voice. So I think you are really doing that. And, yeah. um, you know, I appreciate all of that uh, that you do for the local community, Hawaiian community, even though you're not Hawaiian by blood, <laughs> you know, that's uh, that's what is Hawaiian by blood. Anyways, what's the point of that? that that's what I'm but learning. It makes sense. No, I mean, I'm not Polynesian, <laughs> but it, it, I, but it's, you know, those are my, I feel like these are a lot of my brothers and sisters mm -hmm. and I've been Hanai'd into many families and, you know, I, I can, I can, Pigeon with the best of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm the token holly. I didn't have my shirt. I was going to bring it, but I'm your token holly. I'm the one that's going to like be invited to the barbecue and, um, you know, get killed first in, in a Hawaiian <laughs> horror flick. <laughs> if there's sacrifice. A, if anybody, yeah. Sacrifice. <laughs> if there's a Hawaiian horror film, I'm the first to go. I already understand my role. <laughs> we appreciate that, Danny. You're, no problem. You're one of us now. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You meet a lot of celebrities and like pretty influential people just throughout your work. What What yeah. is your best celebrity story? Oh, my God. I could write a book. I've written a book on this that I will someday put out. That would be cool. I'd um, read it. I don't, God, there's just been a lot. Like I I think Gene Simmons, this is a funny, like there's my one of my favorite is Gene Simmons from Kiss. Mm -hmm. um, he's just the one of the, like weirdly enough, if you know anything about how his, his, um, his, you know, his reputation is that he's just like this womanizer and he's just this like whatever, but he's actually like the most polite guy. Like we went to dinner once and he, we walked out of this, this restaurant and he walked on the outside on the curb, like old school mm -hmm. chivalry. You know what I mean? Like he pulls chairs out for you. He orders everything on the menu because he knows you may not order what you really want. So mm -hmm. he wants to make sure you're happy, you know, like, um, and there's just been like, uh, some stories I just can't even tell, but like, mm -hmm. I mean, oh God, I'm trying to think of like the best, um, your, your story about Jamie Lee Curtis is pretty interesting. Oh my gosh. That was hilarious. Cause yeah. I walked in here and he's like, you smell really good. I'm like, it's this lotion and it's this lotion that I, it's the, <laughs> that they sell to tourists at Long's, but it's a, okay. North shore. It's called bubble. I think it's bubble shack, <laughs> bubble shack. Um, and they, they, it's got the little loofah soaps and the lotions and they have one that's got blue. It's called ocean something. And I remember smelling, I'm like, I love this. And so I was wearing it and she, wa she was at, um, Kalapoi cafe standing behind me and she walked by me and then walked back. And then she goes, can I ask you a question? 
I, you smell so good. What is that you're wearing? And so I told her, and she's like, I love, I love longs. And she showed me her shoes and she was wearing locals. <laughs> and, and she, and I'm like, Oh, you could just go there. It's there. And she's like, okay, no problem. And, I, and then I thanked her. Um, I'm like, Oh no. I'm like, she goes, Oh, I appreciate that. I go, no, like I'm, I appreciate you. Like, thanks for, to you for, I think I said Dasani yogurt or I, I forgot it was the <laughs> wrong yogurt brand, but she's like the face of, um, Activa. Yeah. He's Activa. probably said Yoplait. Yeah. I said, I said it, the wrong brand <laughs> and she just like touched my arm gently and kind of did this like smile thing and then left <laughs> and it's because she <laughs> got the wrong <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> but she's probably walking around right now. Like she, I know she likes longs cause people have seen her there before. Mm-hmm. Like, but she's probably walking around right now smelling like my lotion. <laughs> That's so like, funny. So, and it took me a minute because she's talking about like, this is when you're not expecting to see a celebrity and they're just like standing in front of you, you're like, wait, what's happening? Yeah. Is this <laughs> real life? She's like, fucking Curtis, <laughs> dude. She's like, boss bitch. Yeah. Does she live here? <laughs> I, you know, she's here a lot. So oh, I wonder yeah. if she's got a home here. Okay. Because it's not the first time that I've heard she's been around Kailua too. People okay. say it all the time, but I've just, that was the first time I saw her, but... Yeah. But I used to work for Prince. Like when I worked for Prince, especially in the ways I used to tell people these stories all the time. Like he's an interesting dude. Like he's he yeah, is exactly he like you think he yeah. is. <laughs> and people are like, "Were you not allowed to look at him?" And I'm like, "No, that's true. We were not allowed to look at him when what? he'd come backstage. Um, you had to turn around or like stay busy or look at a wall." And I remember the first time that I was told that he had just pulled up, and this was at the place still. And he pulls up and he's got my tay. And they're walking in and they're like, okay, you got to turn. If you tell me not to look at something, that's the first thing I'm going to do, right? And I'm a huge Prince fan. I was a huge Prince fan. Like, I was never starstruck by anybody I worked with. But, man, was I starstruck for him. And so the minute they said that, and I turned around and I looked right at him. And he was walking with Maite. And they were, like, in these long, like, just fabric flowing. And you know how, like, at Blaisdell, that little, like, breezeway, the the wind kind of whips around in there? It was flowing, just like you would expect, Prince. And I swear he was in slow motion. And he looked right at me. And I thought, oh, shit, I'm getting fired. <laughs> I'm so getting fired. But he went into his room. And then, like, 10 minutes later, the bodyguard comes out. We called him the assassin. Mm-hmm. He was, like, this white ball guy in a suit, small but scary. And he's like, hey, we need you to go get beach balls. Blow them up. And then you're going to meet. Uh, on song three, we want you to stand in the front of the stage and you're going to hand, hand them to him. So I'm, I you know, go on the back of the, the, the runner's moped, two longs, get beach balls, blowing up beach balls. I'm like, I'm going to die from blowing up all these beach balls. <laughs> and then I got to sit at the bottom of the stairs and hand them to him while he, he sang a song and he came up and he grabbed him and he just threw him out into the crowd. That's fun. So somehow me looking at him, I got ta- tasked with an assignment. Um, and, oh, and he wanted me so soup later. I had, to go, I had to go, but I became his errand girl. <laughs> nice. And I, I was like, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. He had solid, he had gold toothbrushes and brushes. Like actual gold I don't or just know gold they, they colored? They looked like they were engraved from Tibetan monks. <laughs> like, cause I, they were like, you need to set this up. And the time that was the, the locker room bathrooms, there were stalls mm-hmm. and there was a couple of sinks. So I had to lay his stuff out and it was all gold. Dang, that's Beautiful. crazy. I don't know if it was real gold. To this, I tried to look around to see if anybody ever talked about this stuff, but they never did. Mm. I kick myself for not taking pictures of those, but I do <laughs> got a picture of his dressing room. Okay, <laughs> super cool. With with the flowers from our backyard on his on his stand. Amazing. Because he didn't want purple, and I got him all purple, and I had to take all the purple out. So last minute, my mom cut a bunch of bird of paradise and made these arrangements for his dressing room. So yeah, yeah. that was a really cool story. Prince of Paradise. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what is uh, what are some tips for social media that you want to share with the listeners today if they really want to grow a following? It's hard. Okay. So it's really hard to grow followings the way it used to be. As you know, people don't follow and like as much. If if all the people watch your videos followed you, you'd have millions and millions mm-hmm. of followers. So Yeah. I, I see the analytics. I think we have like 30,000 followers yeah. and it says it reaches like 14,000 accounts. Yeah. You're just like, yeah. what the hell? Why are yeah. they not... So, like, call to actions are important. Like, you kind of have to tell people what to do. Mm-hmm. It sounds weird, and I feel like it feels almost marketing-y, mm-hmm. like, where you're just like, you know, please like and follow. Don't forget to, to follow. Don't forget to like our page. Don't, um, turning off your comments so that only people that are following you can comment helps because then they want to say something. So post things that are going to get them to want to talk, and mm-hmm. then they'll follow you to, to comment. Mm-hmm. Um, Timing, you got to figure out your timing, and that's just a, a lot of trial and error. Everybody's different. Um, but um, being genuine, um, trying to be as, like, genuine as possible, as, or, like, real as possible, and resist the urge to 
to fake things, to buy followers, to do anything that's fake. Um, that's a big problem right now. I tell people to like, try not to take things personally and don't freeze, like don't give up because you think you're not doing as good as someone else because a lot of people are, are gaming the system. Mm -hmm. So, but I feel like the platforms are gonna catch on really quickly to that, especially if TikTok goes down because Instagram's gonna get tired. Like right now Instagram's letting everything happen. Mm -hmm. They just want users. But if TikTok goes down, Instagram's gonna crack down. Mm -hmm. And then all the people that are gaming the system are gonna have a problem. So yeah. stay true to yourself, original, and just keep posting. And collaboration. Like, don't compete. Collaborate, not compete. Yeah. That's Community important. over competition. Right. Absolutely. Okay. Can't cool. stress that enough. All right. Great, great tips. Great tips. Mahalo. How do you feel about the, the new check mark stuff that everybody oh. can get ver verified now? First, I hated it. But like mm -hmm. then I started to realize what it is doing is drawing out people to be real. Mm -hmm. I have a real problem with, with accounts that are running entirely anonymously, especially ones with huge influence. Mm -hmm. We have no idea who you are and you have no accountability. Mm -hmm. So if people really want, if, if it means that we have to pay to get support and access and we have to put our real names on our account, good. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, the only reason I did it with 808 Viral is because I don't want my name on 808 Viral. Mm -hmm. It's because it's a brand thing. But like, but it, I like the fact that it's going to give people who are truly wanting to be. I know a lot of people are like, you know, but our privacy. Well, you know, it's we we have to we have to remember that there's a lot of people out there that mean to harm you from from anonymous accounts. They're mm -hmm. trying to combat bots, I think, mm -hmm. and fake accounts. Um, but I do think they need to change the color. <laughs> like it needs to be. Like the blue check mark should have stayed for public figures and they should have done something like a red check mark or like how they did on Facebook back at, at one mm -hmm. point. To, they had to separate colored. the the blue check mark verified and like the meta meta verified. Right. That's what it's called, yeah. Yeah. Like they, it should be separated because now it's hard to tell the difference of who's yeah, a public everybody figure. has blue check mark these days. You I know, I I couldn't believe how yeah. much my comment section was lighting up with blue check marks. Yeah. Yeah. I did it once because I wanted to see, and I noticed my, I did notice my engagement went up on my personal page when I did mine. Mm. So I don't know. I'm going to see how it goes. I feel like a lot of people are complaining about it. I think they, sh I don't know why they didn't just go to the colored check marks like they had with Facebook back mm -hmm. in the day. There used to be gray for like businesses or, or maybe it was locations and then blue was for celebrities and there was another color for um, businesses. Mm. So you could verify your business or you could verify your, as a public figure or as a place. And that's what they should be doing, but you know, I, I don't know. I have a hard time figuring. They're they're so desperately competing with TikTok. They keep making a bunch of dumb decisions, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because I see a lot of people, just people, two thousand followers, three thousand followers. I know. Have blue check marks. It's weird to see. Yeah. Like you're like three hundred. Like someone's someone was mad. They're like, man, I've been working on my Instagram for years. My mom, she's not even on here, and she's got two hundred followers, and she's got a blue check mark. <laughs> It makes no sense. <laughs> yeah, it, it, to me, kind of uh, devalu devalues it. It did. Um, so it's like not everybody can get verified. So it's yeah, like, it's I mean, I would have paid for the subscription mm -hmm. just to have access to support. Mm -hmm. You didn't have to give me a check mark. What, so, so what what comes with with it when you get the check mark? You get access to support. And what does that mean? You have like a way that you can actually get a person. Oh, and before you couldn't. No. Oh. You ever tried to, con to connect with somebody on Instagram? No, I never or had to. Mm, yeah, there's nobody, nobody home. You might as well <laughs> shout into the, into the night. <laughs> Nothing happens. Um, reportings, reports, all kinds of things never happen. I can't even mm. get imposter accounts down. I can't, uh -huh. I can't even get Henry. I help, I run Henry and Cusick's account and I can't even get his imposter accounts down as a celebrity. Really? I go into his blue chair verified celebrity page, report it as, 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 um, imp like, pretending to be a celebrity from the celebrity page, and they still won't take those things down. Hmm. Very irritating. So it's appealing to have access to actual support. Okay. So. Yeah, there's some benefits then. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Um, what is one thing you wish people knew about you that they don't? That's, that's an interesting question. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Um. I have really bad social anxiety. Mm -hmm. I think people around me know that, but like, um, I always tell people like, if I don't show up to something or I leave early, like, please don't take it personal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, um, a lot of right times people didn't see me and why I'm always behind the, like I'm not in the spotlight is probably has to do with that. And I don't like, I have a hard time in crowds. Like, even though I, now we're talking and everything, but it's weird. Social anxiety is, um, it's not even about that. I can function fine, but I can go home and then obsess over the things I said for days. You know mm. what I mean? Like it's a, it's something I've been working on. 
and getting better about with like, there's something called cognitive behavioral therapy, which I recommend anybody who has anxiety or depression look into it because it helps. It helps you understand what's your mind is like warning you about is real or what's not. Like, mm -hmm. are you, why are you obsessing over these things and how to break the patterns? So I always tell people like, if you see me like jetting out of a location, like I'm somewhere and I just disappear, <laughs> don't take it personal. Nothing happened. I just decided like I'm at my limit. Mm -hmm. I have to go. <laughs> Totally understandable. <laughs> yeah. Especially big crowds. Yeah. I used to get a lot of anxiety in, in big crowds. I do too. Yeah. And I worked concerts for years. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. But um, I went to Common Kings with Eddie Dowd and he's so sweet because he knows. So we were there for hours and then suddenly I'm like, okay, got to go. And he's like, all right, see you later. And he's like, <laughs> no pressure. He, he knew. He knew I hit yeah, my limit. Yeah. He was like, I'm just glad you came. <laughs> glad you showed up. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, before we end the podcast... We have to know what is your life hack? The moment okay. of truth. I have two. Because the one I was going to say about you guys already said, which was not taking things personal. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to reiterate that one because that one took me a long time to learn. But like not like 99% of people's bullshit with you is, is not yours. Like that took me uh, so long to, to understand. And once you understand that, like you don't take things so personally, it's so it's such a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, I have two other ones that are there. One is... Um, Labeling your chords, and you guys will appreciate this because how many times we have chords and like we're trying to find that one chord and we don't know what it's to. I've gotten into labeling all my chords now. Like you buy something, it comes with a different charging cord, so everything gets labeled. Mm -hmm. It will save you time from running around mm -hmm. <laughs> trying to label all your chords. Um, and my last one would be, um, this was actually, we did a thing called Hawaii Hacks back in 2017. We had a segment, and we still do them from time to time, and we had Tita Hacks. It was removing our Hawaiian bracelets. And I wish I had a plastic bag to show you, but I will say, like, you know, when you go into the airport security and you can't get your bracelets off, and let me say, you know, you get, you get these, like, I this is my high school, this is college, and somehow they shrunk. I think hmm. Hawaiian bracelets shrink. I'm just kidding. We grow into <laughs> them. We grow into them. We obviously get bigger, you know, whether you're high. Yeah, I'm thinking for a little bit. I'm like, is that true? Is I'm that trying facts? to make excuses for yeah. the fact that we fill them out. <laughs> um, you, whether you're high or like you're, you know, you just like, you know, you small kind mamona, yeah. like whatever. Um, and you can't get them off anymore. And you practically, even lotion, you have to practically dislocate your thumb yeah. to get them off. And I don't know who showed me this, but you get the plastic bag, you, you pull it under. And then you just slide the whole thing off and it just comes off like that right into your bag. Really? It works. It's like then. magic. And you can get them on that way too. You put the plastic bag over your hand, slide your bracelets on. I wonder how that works. Because all it does is like you pull it underneath and then you take around the whole time and then you pull the handle and it's it pulls them down and there's plastic under it. So it slides, slides. right off your hand. Oh. But so you it, save your hands. <laughs> but I swear, I mean, if it's still really tight, it it'd still be hard, right? You would think. I yeah. look how look how. I'm look trying at to this. figure out the. I'm trying to wrap my head around the physics of it. <laughs> it's just the sliding. It's huh. just that it's slippery. You would think that it makes it doesn't make sense, right? Because you're like, yeah. well, physically, my hand is that big, and I can't can't get it over this part of my thumb. Yeah. When I put a bag on there, it slides right off. That's how I'm gonna get it off. Oh, huh, okay. Yeah. Because I don't think it's, it's, magic. it's not the the friction. But um, just like the, the size of like, it just doesn't right. make sense. Like, but I think uh, it catches on your skin, and even when you're putting yeah, yeah, it catches your on kit, you're yeah. putting um, I mean, I'm double jointed, so I can yeah. kind of get my hand pretty narrow. But even then, like, it, I can only get these off now with with plastic oh, bags. Wow. So if I go through airport, I bring a plastic bag. Okay, well, everybody, go try that out and let me know how that works because I'm, I'm curious. I think I'm just gonna start putting on bracelets that I see just to try it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll find a bag afterwards and I'll show you. It's uh, like well, there's no, you know, we banned plastic bags, <laughs> so it's kind of hard. To, I tried to find one before I came. I couldn't even find one. Yeah, you know, produce yeah. bag. <laughs> That's funny. All right, so what are your your future goals? Um, you know, beyond 808 viral, what do you hope to accomplish? Um, we started a nonprofit, so I do want to start doing documentaries. I have like this 10 part documentary series that I want to do. I have a lot of friends who are like wanting to make films and short films, and we're writing some scripts right now. So I would love to start doing that with all the, I mean, we know so many people, all of us, we're all so like, we have such a great group around us with Hawaii creators, especially. Mm -hmm. We have unlimited amounts of amazing videographers, editors, um, actors, uh, writers. We just, I want to collaborate and I want us to put out some, it's, it's, we're long overdue for some great, like independent Hawaii short films. Mm -hmm. So I think we should do that. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I love it. 
Yep. I, I'm in full support of that. I'm looking into like ways that we can raise some funding because it's hard. You know, we could mm -hmm. all do this stuff on our own time, but we all know how hard that is. Definitely. So yeah. we can get some funding. We actually pay our friends and have like a legit production. We have the talent. Mm -hmm. And yes. then we have the platforms. So we have the capability for distribution. It would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anybody think, wants to help. I think, it, I think it'll happen. Yeah. I think we're, we have a lot of momentum going and um, especially with social media, you can reach people so easily. Oh, my gosh. Days. We have. That's, the, that's yeah. the one thing we can offer that a lot of people can. Is yeah, just leverage that. You just got to leverage it. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Let's do it. So, oh, he's got a bag. Oh, oh. Jordan I show just you. got us a plastic bag. Because you don't believe. I, I was wondering. I was like, <laughs> why did Jordan get up? He, like, never gets <laughs> up. And, oh, okay. All right. So <laughs> hopefully you. if you're still watching, we're going to try this life hack right over here. Okay. So this is a life hack. To take off your Hawaiian bracelets yeah. for all you local titas. So you just gotta like work it under. Watch me not be able to do this oh, <laughs> now that I'm trying to do it in front of you. I do this all the time. I don't understand the physics of it. I so know. this Believe is gonna me, help I, my is, brain. This is um racked my brain too. So now, now that I've got it underneath. Okay. And I just gotta pull. What? Wait. I can't, no, I already see it coming off. Yeah. Of course, now I'm not doing it as well here. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> it's magic. So you don't got to put butter or soap no. or whatever. Because lotion doesn't really work. Lotion. And so then you can do the same, the reverse, getting it back on, you know, and then you just slide it. Well, in this case, it's going to be harder, but okay. yeah. I think I can probably get it back on. Wow. Like, I'm double jointed, so I can... Ugh. <laughs> Man, there was a time that these used to just slide right on. <laughs> and it just tells a, little, a big story about where, like, I'm not going to be able to get this one back on. Okay. Without the pack. We'll do that later. Yes, yes. We're, we're, like, we're going to wrap up. Like hand damage. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how the girls with the, with the full on, like, exhaust pipe tuna cans, how they even, <laughs> I don't know how they're going to do it. I don't know if it works for them, but <laughs> it works <Wow>. for me. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. That's just one of the coolest life hacks. <laughs> awesome. Well, I got my last fast fade five questions. Okay. Let's uh, just rapid fire answers. Favorite childhood snack? Oh, rice candy. Mm, like the tomoy? The tomoy. Yeah, love those. <laughs> Favorite movie? Oh, my God. We were just talking about this. Probably Lord of the Rings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which one? The first. The first? Yeah, first Lord of the Rings or even the Rings of Power, or even though it's a series, but yeah, super into that right yet. now. Um, is it is it worth it to watch the Ring of Powers? Oh God, I wasn't gonna do it because I kept people kept saying, "Oh, they didn't straight through the story," and uh, it was so good. <laughs> okay. It was so good. Okay. I'll watch it again. That's all the motivation I need. Yeah, I like the third Lord of the Rings. Do you? Yeah, I feel like that was too much. If you like action, you that was a good one. Well, my element, uh, middle school self really loved like the battles. All the, yeah. it's a boy thing. Yeah, exactly. See, me, I, I get. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I like the lifestyle stuff, you know. I don't like all that fighting. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that, that's why I like the third one, because it's all action. <laughs> okay, and um, favorite drink? My favorite drink? Mm -hmm. um, I'm super into sparkling water. Like, <laughs> I know it's so stupid, but I, I had quick soda, so. Mm -hmm. um, and um, frescas. Mm -hmm. Like, anything that doesn't have sugar. Yeah. I like these a lot, too. Yeah, Shaka tea. These Check are actually them out. really good. And they have no caffeine, no, which I need. And zero calories. And Momaki and tea is good for you. Yeah, I like this. Like, I'm definitely going to check these out because I'm always looking for stuff because I can't do sugar. Mm -hmm. So it limits, you know, what you can drink. That's it. Yeah, and you can still drink it while you fast. Mm -hmm. Okay, favorite video game? Oh, my gosh. That's going to be a hard one. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm like super into Roblox again right now with my nephew. Like we're mm -hmm. constantly playing Roblox. A lot of our stuff is like random games that you probably never heard of, but very Roblox styles. Um, I still like Star Wars Galaxies. Um, oh, do you and your husband still do dates on Star Wars? We, <laughs> we haven't done it in a while, <laughs> but we're really like super into VR right now. So like okay. we, we do like VR boxing. We've been doing VR um, like we go into like, uh, I forget the name of it, like the walk the plank thing or like, mm -hmm. like we, basically we just, we're just making our rounds through all the VR games right now. So yeah, we don't play as much because it's a time sucker. Mm -hmm. And when we play, we play, like we play, <laughs> like we go for, you know, and it's just, but we haven't done any like Twitch streaming or anything like that. Like I'm afraid to get into it because I feel like it's a whole nother addiction. Mm -hmm. And gaming was an addiction for us. We had to stop. Really? <laughs> like him and I used to sit for like 12, 14 hours. Straight? 
just straight. Like, we would alternate getting food for each other. Like, it was crazy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So crazy. we kind of we kind of backed off of them, but mm-hmm. I like role playing games though. Yeah. The most. yeah. I grew up playing RPGs, Me Kingdom too. Hearts, Final Fantasy. We used to play Halo a lot too, but oh, like yeah. I'm kind of done with kind of the, those kind of games, but I like role playing best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. World of Warcraft. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I've never played WoW, but love um, World just of Warcraft. like the PlayStation fantasy games. games. Um, you ever play um, Fantasy Star? No. Oh, that's a GameCube game. Is it? Yeah, that's. A I haven't cool anything one. on GameCube. Oh, okay, okay, yeah. All right, favorite local food spot. God, I'm afraid that starts fights. <laughs> this is a this is like a loaded question. Uh, it's just personal opinion. Like, okay, I, I'm really into food trucks right now. Mm-hmm. Like, honestly, I just make my rounds. Like, I'm kind of addicted to the Steads, but it's not really local food. They do like smash burgers. Oh, okay. But like, I've been going there a lot. Um, it's so hard to. Uh, is it the? Um, uh, oh my gosh. It's so hard to even like narrow it down. It's too much. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is gonna be a funny one, but like I discovered the local mocos at High Stakes. Have you ever tried High Stakes? High Stakes That's is the like one in Waikiki. High Stakes is just like the Foodland Steak place, but they have a local oh. moco there that is so good. It's Wait, like my new thing. Where is it at? Like it's the the Foodland like next to Foodlands. They have High Stakes. Those little places where you get the steak plates. Huh. It's just like a steak plate. In all place. Foodlands? Yeah, I think it's a Foodland brand. Where, where is it located? Like the place like, you like go? The which, one I, the, when I was at Kailua, land? like right in Kailua at the food land on the left side, like there's a, a high stakes okay. right there. I've never seen it at like the food lands that I go to. So maybe. And they have like steak cool. poke bowls and uh-huh. they have like um, local mocos that are actually pretty good. Okay. Like it's kind of surprising, but yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I really can't even like narrow it down. Okay. We'll go with that. It's we'll so that. stressful to think about. I love all <laughs> food. I love, I'm just, I love I love, like, there's so many little hidden spots here. And I also don't want to give up my places because I feel like true. we yeah. tell you and then you can't get in anymore. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was the hardest question Kamaka asked you on the podcast? Oh, what was the f- my favorite food spot? It's like my brain just exploded <laughs> and overwhelmed with, like, so much stuff. Like, all these images flooded. I'm like, I can't <laughs> narrow it down. No, okay, we'll try that. Uh, Lokomoko near um, Foodland, high stakes. Yeah, high stakes. Like, it's mm-hmm. it's so weird, but it's, it's, it's not, like, a traditional, like, it's a little bit different. But yeah. you'd be surprised. They put these, like like fried onions on them and it sounds weird mm-hmm. but it's pretty good nice and so this is the you. hy right That's hi it, hi H-I. Oh, okay i'm thinking of a different thing then no you're thinking of like that steakhouse this is like high stakes it's just like a little strip mall thing okay yeah okay all right yeah. Well, that's all we have today for the podcast. I just want to say mahalo for coming on. Do you have anything you want to share before we wrap up? No, I just really appreciate you having me on here. Thank mm-hmm. you so much. I mean, you're really great at this and what you're mm-hmm. doing is so important and whatever i can do to support you. Um, just let me know. <laughs> yeah, Mahalo, I appreciate that. Yeah. We'll definitely be collabing on a lot of For things sure. in the future. Absolutely. Yeah, well, again, I just want to say Mahalo and wish you all the best of luck. Mahalo, Danny, for joining us on the Hawaiiverse podcast today. Check us out on Hawaiiverse.com, download our app. And I just want to say, keep spreading aloha, be kind to one another, and Mahalo for listening to us today. New episodes every Thursday, so make sure you follow us and leave a review. I'm your host, Kamaka, and you'll see me next time on the Hawaii Verse Podcast. Ahoy ho.